Oh, he's starting at level 10. Well, let's see where we work from. We get into the match proper. So Shinblade always just like straight forward team. Right, we got fireballs. We got uppercuts. We're not trying to do anything too crazy. We're just staying solid. Here, trying to go for the jump in. Safe block string and then backs up with the taco to reestablish his face. But here we go. Dormalkin did have an opportunity to get a little bit of offense, but doesn't get too much for it. Yeah, a little predictable. Forcing these jump ins, Shinblade just being patient, getting Zanny airs, and just holding Storm hostage in the corner. Even on these little resets, getting more pressure and just winning these trades. Nice Annie air again, always ready for the jumps. Here, here this time, ready for the follow up. EX is just enough, did the math. Very nice to take the kill there. Shinblade looking incredibly solid through this first character. Yeah, you see, Shinblade is happy to hang back and let Sturm kind of just let themselves hang a little bit if you want to keep jumping from that far away distance. But, going for full combo, just DP for the damage. Put Yamazaki in the corner, and well, Yamazaki not really one with the bust outs, so it's gonna have to try to fight his way out of here and avoid getting two characters down as Yori. Yeah, another boy here to continue to kind of win out on the dagger pressure, gets the DP again. And still just winning so much off of the the fireball game is really doing it all for Shinblade here and Iori obviously has a fireball that's good enough to get it done, but you don't really think about him getting played like this. This is just ridiculous KOF fundies coming out from Shinblade. Yeah, it's a big check right now on Sturm, and you know, Shinblade just continues to cash it out. Right, crushing C misses, but still Shinblade finds a full corner combo here. Gonna just cash it out, still has plenty of meter. Gonna spend it, yeah, it's gonna be, oh, Chris, already down to Half-Life, looking at an OCV. You gotta be extra careful here if you're Sturm. You have a lot of meter. One big hit could at least take Yori down, but first you gotta find it. Yeah, I mean, Okris does have access to crazy damage here. Did find the, the 2B, rather. Was able to get anything for it, and now is traded back to neutral here. Finblade continues to look so solid, and has a bar to sit on as well after finding the DP. Oh, there's a super, there's the block. Let's see if we get a full combo. Ah! Oh. Didn't cancel from the 4B, and another anti-air DP is going to do it for Shinblade. And again, just testing Sturm and how they're maneuvering in neutral and just calling them out each time with those uppercuts, not letting them jump for free. And really, he's going to have to force. Stormwork is really going to have to think about their approach in game number two. Yeah, I definitely agreed, especially with the the characters that we have out here. My... I. I'm definitely of the opinion that if you're playing Yamazaki, I do think he is probably the most effective point character coming out here. So I would have liked to have seen him point to try and establish some pressure early on before Iori has the meter to kind of harass him here. But Vanessa already walked to the corner of the record fall too, but we are going to get a punish here. Signs of life. Thermalkin. All right. Avoiding some things here and there. Small well, likely too. You know, those, those fast normals, like the Crouch D, always going to be really potent. Having all this ability with the quick cancels. And it's putting pressure. I mean, Shimbley is just kind of playing with the food. Big DP with. Going to use EX for this mid-screen conversion. It's going to be some great damage here. Not enough to go for a super cancel, but the overhead and one more hit will do it. Oh, and the DP is blocked. Thermal can finally... That is That was some KOF stuff there. Using the, the a separate angle on the jump. Going for the very low, very quick short hop to make that jump look like it was going to go farther than it did. Iori whiffs the DP. Incredible bait there. Stormwalk can looking different so far this game. Yeah, just getting any, any little momentum. Just paid off so much, but here's the combo. The small drop, but the counter hit is going to lead to this huge corner combo here for Shimbley. He gets a reset with the Rekkas, and we take those. Dropping the elbow there on the second Rekka. Very nice stuff from Shinblade here. Yamazaki going to come in. Now again, this character is one of the most fantastic batteries in the game and is so good at being able to build not only meter for himself and his teammates, but cash it out with the Poison Super. But so far, he's going to rush down off the Rekkas into the EXDP. Oh, and there's another one. Shinblade just reading the situation saying, I know you want to move forward, you want to press. I'm gonna just go into full disrespect mode to get a handle on it. The no jump zone. Once more, Shinblade turning, bringing this back. There's a block on there. DP punish on the Shatter Strike. And now Shinblade showing off the Kyo and one character away from taking this first game.
or sorry, game number two, but taking the first, taking the set. Ready? Welcome down to Oh Chris though. Again, has plenty of resources here. Very high damage output character, but that cross up is just disgusting. Drops the combo, maintains pressure, and is able to kind of mash out of it. I like that from Shinblade. Just slide into rock, overhead gets blocked. Nothing afterwards. DP, light punish, nothing crazy. But again, Shinblade just happy to uppercut super cancel. One juicy combo away to finish it, and that's gonna do it. Shinblade takes a set 2-0. Yeah, I mean, honestly, an incredible display of fundamentals there in the early stages of those games. Yori and Kyo, for the most part, kind of the, the story of the game, the flavor, the flavor of the patch always comes and goes. So happy to see my boy Ralph Jones, and then Markio with you know, a pretty standard team because the, the Yuri has the battery and then like a really good solid Fusion A and Rock to round that out. Okay. Pressure here and then backs it off. He like this so far. Finding opportunities to charge the fireball and getting DPs afterwards as well. Great neutral so far here for Markio. We get any or with the upward fireball as well. Nice. Ooh. Hits the ground CD. Couldn't get the EX launch for a little extra credit. Unfortunate. But at least Signor Chubi is not down and out yet. It's got a little bit of bar, a little bit of life. But Markio is just really holding it down super well. Okay. Oh, trying to go for the CD there, not going to work out. Full punish. And Yuri, while you mentioned she is an incredibly strong battery, is also ridiculous at dumping meter herself as far as like the short, like uh, half bar to full bar combos. She's very good at executing on those. Yeah, and Mark has been hitting everything pretty consistently. So their game plan is looking rock solid. You know, not overextending, but knowing like right now with Raul. You know, your anti airs are, are alright. Huge. But, um, Chuby with some bar here can make some big damage happen if they can get that right hit. And Marky just kind of being patient, gets dive bombed in the corner, gets the sweep, but manages to jump out. Double overhead for the knight here. Markyo does have control, gets the Azuna bomb. Oh, and not too much else afterwards here. Chubi Lich is able to kind of press out of the situation, but a little too much burn watching coming from Chubi here. Has let Markio get away with a few jumps, but there's a nice TP. Oh, unfortunate. Gets clipped, landing on the other side. It's going to be a good chunk of damage. We're at almost chip territory here, but the DP baited a jump out by whiffing the Cypher. And nice uppercut from Markio. Two characters down already. You know, uh, Yuri is not going to last once the Yuri combo, but the damage is dark. Okay, found the hit, spins the EX. Can be able to not quite get the kill, but chips him with the fireball. Okay, safe and solid there to end that one out. But two of the strongest characters in a row to have to deal with, with the amount of resources that they have. This would be an incredibly impressive comeback here from Chubby Lizzo. Excited to see. I mean, Yuri with with some bar, classic uh, anchor character in KOF. But now Fusion A with four. Super scary. The roll gets punished. Great opportunity for Chuvi. As Markio gets called out. Get that full corner this run with two more bars. I'm gonna cash out some extra credit. No, just gonna let it rock and try to get one more hit. But wake up throw from Markio. Okay, back dashing here just to try and avoid these little air approaches coming up. Fusion A spends the super. Gets a punish on the jump back here, and now mix up continues in the corner. Should be jumped right into it. It's a full jump in. The EX Fireball, the EX Reckless. He's cashing out. Meter here needs one more solid hit with the Scum Gale. There we go. Should be taking out two characters with the Yor. He's gonna get a good chunk of life back, and it's it's pretty close in this first game. Yeah, this ended up significantly better than it was looking here. Should be just incredible comeback there with the Yori. Now, I mean, Rock, a little bit of a different beast here. Able to put the EX down and look at the damage from this character. He's able to get a safe jump too, but instead it's gonna go into the level three, the climax. I like that. Get the damage, get the power up on Rock. And now we're just gonna try to finish the job with that extra little extra oomph. Okay. Come back there, standing C is able to get the confirm there. After the CD, if you get the CD and you're able to buffer the fireball there, you just the world is your oyster for the follow-up. Yeah, 
That was good awareness of Mark, you know. uh, All of like, those like, neutral decisions have something behind them. So you see like when those CDs come out or you know just any kind of fireball, there's always that extra layer right behind that he's ready to go with. And you know that's just a mark of a solid KOF player always having their options on deck and ready. Back into the, the, uh, the point match again here. This was the biggest problem coming out. Plus the Yuri, she was able to get so much done here. The is already great adjustments here. He was able to find a deep cross up. All right, yeah, getting some good damage as a whole. Really broke the bar. There's a counter hit into the corner. Didn't get the full record confirm, but really just needs one more solid hit on, on Yuri to take her down and you know change the script from game number one. Okay, I jump again. A little bit of a stagger there. I like the idea. Oh, and a great follow-up there with the red kick afterwards. Really like that from Chuvi. Was respecting the fact that Markia was going for so many DPs in that first round. Great adjustment. Big time, yeah. Those cross-ups nasty and Chuvi confirming of everything. And now Kyo's going with a huge life lead, bringing in Bijan A. So Markia at least, again, a lot of bar. Bijan A can just off of small confirms, cash out a lot of damage and big corner carry, so this is going to force Chubi to make some good decisions, like using the R for the Rekka to go past the normals, but the jump B from Bijan A is going to start the party. Ooh, that little free stand of a reset there, back dashes after the EX, but catches the Rekka straight to the face, good mash out of the pressure. The presses from Arkeo looking really strong here as we get another whiff on it. It's just that corner pressure. Gnarly and Markio evens it up really, really fast. You know, using up a little bit of bar, but she's still got three, and that's gonna lead to a lot. You know, the EX carrier or just any full confirm. But I like having Ralph here is nice because you have buttons that are gonna be able to contest Vision A. That and, uh, one of the, the biggest standout things about Ralph to me is that he has that DP that hits on both sides here. So the threat of a cross up is not nearly as scary unless they have their stuff really unlocked. All right, that's a hard knockdown. Standard pressure, no throw. But now Marco brought this back pretty well. Amazing block there after the glide. Tries to go for the jump again. Pushed away a little bit. But again, he jumped back into the dash forward with the kicks. Incredible stuff here. And it manages to stuff out the shatter strike. Just a, a couple of frames too late. That might have been able to burst through and get Chubby some big damage. But now it's going to be Yori with the four bars. And yeah, Markio sitting pretty here. And we saw, I mean, Yori did really good work in game number one. To bring it back. One less character to worry about, but you know, Markio still with so much meter here. We can turn, you know, quickly end this if Chubi ain't careful. That was an incredible jump back there for the anti air guard cancel the bison face. Goes for the low profile. Iori thinking underground there. Hey, let's dig his digs his heels in. But you know, it's still in a rough spot for Chubi. Giving uh, Markio all this ground, backing it up, but gets the low again. With that crouch B into the other corner you go. It's just enough to take kill here, so we're gonna get ourselves into that final matchup once again. And a very similar state of the game here. See if Markio can uh, replicate some results. Yeah, definitely feel like he's gonna go for what he saw last time. Finding the confirm into the climax. Just to get some big damage and that power up as necessary, but a Google low crouching D. You gotta be really careful with how you approach your because those are gonna catch your landing recovery. Yeah, third of the life there, but here we go. This is that answer that we saw last time. He's only gonna go for level one. There's the climax cancel actually. And if he doesn't go for the power up here, it might just be enough. Oh, almost. Such a good position here. But with the 1EX, anything can be lethal. Their chip damage is now on the table. Chubi cannot take a single hit, but the jump D's gonna do it. And Markio sending Chubi the losers two games to none on the back of that really good rock. Yeah, incredible back and forth between the two. Get out of it, but uh, I, I, I can respect not wanting to go for a mirror match outright. 
Okay, so early on, we're repping Rekka's early and often. I really like that from Kyo, especially knowing that Elizabeth's gonna lean into that uh, that standing D like we see so often from her. Yeah, and called it. The Rekka beating that uh, second stand E. And, you know, it, it's, it's one of those fights where before there's meter, you know, Kyo's gonna have that, like, slight advantage with the specials. But once Tamago can at least get a bar going, you know, those hits can lead to so much with the EXs that are on deck. Hey, CD, name game here. Oh, but there's the EX again. Kyo just able to break out of that pressure into the empty low. But drops is confirmed. Oh, and the anti air from Tamago get the super confirmed, but there's a grab. Paraz still with a slight life lead and maintaining some good amount of bars compared to Tamago, but just gotta watch out for any of those like nice jump ins that can get the corner. Ooh, big jump D. Gonna cash out. There we go. Elizabeth down on Tamago's side. Yeah, that was, that was more narration than commentary, Raf. Right on cue, the huge jump in there. Incredible stuff from Paraz. <laughs> Here we go, it's gonna be Rock back again. Two of the jack of alls of the game fighting it out here. Kyo has been taking advantage and is gonna get a huge punish on the DP. And in the corner, there's gonna be a, a kind of a tough mix up to deal with. But instead we DP again? The double, we, oh, you thought I'd block after doing it once. You think you have me red? No, sir. Tamago not afraid to double bust out, but still in a bad position here. Oh, wait, big chance. Looks like an execution mistake, let out a DP and Tomorrow just needing one more solid hit to bring in Bijan A. Oh, Wait a minute. Oh, was expecting it to chip. It's not going to be enough. Oh, but the cross cut, uppercut, no sneaky stuff from you, Paraz. Tomago shuts that down. I mean, he's out of there. That was great. He DP'd the last two times his back was on the foot. You got to know, right? Like, mm -hmm. he, the rising tackle is certainly on the menu. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it might not be Taco Tuesday, but I'll take those tacos any day. Got the JD. Able to get a little bit of pressure afterwards. That staggered fireball does get a little bit extra damage here, but not too much else as we find a counter, actually. All right, it's a hard knockdown. The corner gets the low, just whipping the air almost barely. And look at Rot go with this huge lead over Bijan A, who hasn't even really got a chance to press a single far C. Oh, trying to go for the Shatter Strike too. Really trying to fight out of this situation. Tamago not looking too pressed until the EX comes through. Looking for the reset now. Trying to get cute with it. Oh, the counter again. That's going to be BK going. See, it's a hard knockdown and not quite dead yet, but really spooky as Tamago brought this back. Mm, and the patience of a monk just chills, sees the hop 2C. Knew what he was looking for and well executed on the anti air. Bringing it down to the anchor here. So our second time seeing Elizabeth, two and a half bars, so plenty of resources. And Tamago, oh my goodness. Hits the CDP cancel in, in Peraza's face. Just a hard call out, maybe an up back or something. Oh, corner pressure. Peraza's just stuck. The roll though, the jab went for the punish, but wasn't quite able to find it. Blocks the Shatter Strike on the safe jump. Only gets a sweep, though. Oh, the table. Oh, the super cancel is going to get punished. Paraz isn't dead yet, but in such a bad position. Ooh, the guard cancel roll there. Expecting the fireball. Does get the hit. Cashes out the damage. Amazing hit confirmed to keep yourself in this game. But, oh, dude. Is there a worse character to have to bet it all against with Half-Life than Benny Maru? Especially from Tamago, dude. This is a tough one. Oh, yeah, for sure. Already got the air throw to the cross-up. A little bit extra damage to finish the job, and that was just a two-touch scenario. Well done from Tamago. After losing the first character pretty handily, Rock, you know, made the huge comeback, and then Benny sealed the deal. That was good. I mean, that's part of why we see Rock picked by so many of these top players here is because he really is just one of those characters where, are, like, your KOF fundamentals and your ability to play this game the way that it's meant to be played is really, like, sky's the limit with this guy. As, as good as you are is the performance that Rock will put out for you. So, looks like we're going to switch up the order a little bit here. So, we're going to face Elizabeth against the Rock, potentially wants Janae against Benny. Yeah, one of the One of the nice things about the game, these little tactical swaps.
Yeah, we'll see how it works. I mean, we're giving you're giving Janae more meter, but she didn't get to do too much in game number one, so hopefully that unlocks more of her potential. But either way, going to game two. And Tamago sticking to that same order here. Already having Frost in the corner and yeah, great stance he needs. Okay, got your knockdown. Nice block on the empty low. Okay. Wall a little bit. Look at that same jump in. Just gonna go for the cross up there. Perez fighting out of the corner pretty aggressively here. It's just upboarding out of it, and it's just it's just working. Yeah. A big opportunity there with the, the crack to be confirmed, but did not get anything more from it. And let Tamago out of the corner. But the punish. Great with punish, but again, combo drop into super cancel. Tamago on point, catching all these little cute reset approaches and shutting Paraz down. Right, the mirror match actually is on the menu here. Plenty of resources coming out here from Paraz in the green jacket. Empty low this time it is going to connect. Right. A little stylish, we ain't got meter to finish. But you know, it's already setting Tamago on a great pace. X out. Corner to corner. Not quite. Oh, use that EX to close the gap. Didn't quite get the confirm they were looking for, but still on these staggers is able to find a couple hits in a row. It's looking dire. Paraz just having it's a hard time matching up to Tamago's just great, great just defense. Building this wall and shutting Paraz down at every corner. And now it is down to anchor B. Janae. This pirate has to steal back two life bars and then some if she wants to get this treasure oh but looking like this is about to be one of those uh friends we made along the way type of treasures here not getting paid too much as tamago is continuing to find these touches here half the life already gone but we find a shatter strike The nothing, the nothing into CD there. Incredible fight out of that situation. Oh, there's the slap though. The get off me, let me play, let me have a chance. And with that, Elizabeth is finally out of there in Paraz with a sliver and a hope. There is a chance, but this rock is in the building. And with two bars, any one touch can send Paraz packing. Nice backdash there. The whip straight afterwards. Oh, again, the counter. That is worth every time with the big super cancel and then the command grab. We got the best grappler in the game, Rock Howard, finishing it off. Tamago takes that set 2 0. Dude, honestly and truly, I'm glad you uh, <laughs> you kind of hit it with the, uh, the the rock announcement at the end, dude. He was use him, I think, when it comes to utilizing the meter. When you see him on point here, he's just an, like, an unbelievably solid point character when it comes to just really playing the fireball game and kind of neutralizing approaches from other characters. You can see that jump back. Incredible stuff. Oh, gets the first full confirm, too. Super Grenis is on point at max distance and up close. You know, Boyko... Oh my gosh, can't even jump out, throw call out. Any decision is just being matched and destroyed by Super Venus. Okay, got that jump in, gonna land. I can't to see, good answer. Too much else here, finds the throw on the jump in, the timing of the jump, kinda odd there from Boyko. Grenis. I mean, it's one of those things where if you're not sure, uh, you might, as, especially when you have the life lead, you might as well mash though just to find out. Yeah, and that was such a bad spot for Boyko because they get uppercut, they get chipped, and they were just so close it was a do or die. So Super Grenis take takes advantage of it, and now just with this huge lead, this might spell really bad for Boyko, but they find a cool confirm. So if Mike can bring this back, I can keep this nice and close. That BD fan controlled so much of the tempo there. Incredible stuff to be able to take the character on a perfect. That was three great. meters. Three meters for Gato though. This is a 
He's coming in with plenty in the chamber here. This is a, an incredibly dangerous character, and arguably Grandis is best, I think. All right, yeah. Definitely seeing him put the work, so we'll see. Boyko's got to be extra careful here. He used up a lot of resources against Joe, but at the very least has a full life bar to match up against Gato. Oh, deep cross up into the EX. Nice cash out here. I like it too. Boyko's not overextending. He's respecting these reversals and uppercuts and just giving Super Grinus the space, but not like free space. Oh, big punish on the with DP with the meter here should be enough easily to take out Gato and Boyko turning this around. Big 180. Here he comes. The man of the hour in the purple. It's going to be Cronin. Plenty of resources here. Go straight in for the ch dude. Incredible run up there. He's only going to spend one bar, so three more to be able to potentially go for the finish here. They block the overhead. You don't see that very often, but like, you see that very often. Try to jump on Cronin. You're usually going to spell bad news. More plus frames. Super Gun is just putting on this pressure. Wants to get to the Shermie as fast as possible. Hope he's able to take a kill off of it here. Thing really up tempo. Look at the long jump in that time. CD connects. Ooh. Ooh. Oh my god, the blocks. Doesn't block that cross up there, but Boyko just finding just extra credit. Any extra damage here, running on the clock, but the roll gets punished. Oh, Boyko was, was doing some stuff I don't think I've seen before there. <laughs> Uh, the, the, the wall clean cancels? Oh my gosh. Just canceling that dive and setting up these left rights. Good on Grenis for managing out of that. Oh, and gets a huge punch on the DP. Level 1, level 2. Already over half life gone in less than 5 seconds. Oh, but Shermi, a character who's no stranger to cashing out meter herself, is going to get a climax after sending him to Suplex City. Is it enough? I think it is. Man, telling Cronin, sign up for the OnlyFans. Gonna get a treat right now. Free samples on deck, and that's game number one. Boyko with a great confirm, and that Shermie clutches it out. Yeah, I mean, a lot of positive coming from both players there. Super Grand is incredible way to be able to save meter, to be able to cash out on Shermie to keep that an even game. But Boyko, keeping control with Mai for a majority of the game was incredible at being able to just really neutralize a lot of the advantage that Grandis normally gets out of Joe and Gato in those situations. Yeah, that Mai was just so nasty. Being able to handle a Gato for like full life and just maintaining every little thing there just set up the Shermie so well. So now we got round number two, same order. Oh, and then the block on the tiger kick. This is big as Boyko's just getting free damage and Joe's bleeding. He slid out of the corner, sneaky stuff. Now at this point, trade's not in your favor. Gotta be careful here. Oh man, the call outs, Boyko, big pressure. Oh, and just the punish on the hurricane upper immediately hopping over. Boyko is not having any of that, Joe. He said, no thank you. I don't want to experience this high pressure. We want Gato in immediately and already getting a clean hit. Boyko is running away with it. Yeah, incredible same side mix there. He's gonna be able to cash out one bar. Oh, potential gets for game here, depending on how it goes. He's able to stick out the standing C, which does work out to get out of pressure. And now at this point, all these little trades, all these extra hits, working out for Boyko. And Grenis has a lot of bar to bring this back. If he can find like a solid hit, just has to be careful. We saw DP's be like the end of him. Game number one. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, very super active hitbox. Good god, the standing D. <laughs> Oh, into the Shadow Strike! That should be perfect! What an Annie air! Mixing up both options, DP and Shadow Strike. Wow, when it looks so grim for Gato, he claws his way back up. 
But I mean, I've, the boss, the boss monster has arrived here. May, uh, she really, why was able to do the, just the most last game. It was incredible stuff. Yeah, and looking to repeat that here. And Grenis is just kind of waiting, playing really patient. Busted out with some meter to get out of the corner, but Mai's just too quick. Okay, DP does land. Just hop over. He's getting some good mileage of being able to close the distance, but that's not good enough. Boyko takes the kill again. Cronin coming in to fight for the winner's bracket life here for Super Grenis. Yeah, this is a this will be a big win for Boyko. And this is four bar Cronin, so he can at least take out my pretty handily, but it's first gotta catch her. Boyko has just been so tricky with that movement. Yeah, they're gonna mix in that short hop jump CD and using the ability to change the jump arcs there. Incredible. Oh my god, just reading Super Grenis like a book. So we're gonna stuck at this corner. There's the cross up, lets him out, but just flies away. This movement is unmatched. Oh, nice block. Goes for the double. Dude, this is. I, what is this mix? Alright, one more hit. The corner it goes under pressure still. Oh, gets a DP though. Double damage coming through. But Dennis is not out of the woods yet. Oh. Nice block. Oh, shoots him through the fan. Oh my god. He said, I'm out of health, but I'm not out of options. <laughs> pulls, the, pulls the thing out. Oh my god. Final characters. Oh my gosh. Super Goodness used up almost everything. This is going to be the hardest comeback he ever has to do because anything from Shermie is going to do it in the EX command grab. Finishes the job and Boyko sends Super Gladys to the loser's bracket this early on. Yeah, an incredibly huge it's win. It's going to be fun. We have to see if either player can, you know, if basically if like Light KV can get to Shadow X's Clark. We've seen Shadow X time and time again show superiority in bracket upon bracket. So. Very, you know, simple start from both players. Feeling each other out, throwing out little fireballs, simple normals. Shadow X has like a small uh, advantage. Kizzy K with the big hundo on the raid. Thank you so much, Kizzy. Really do appreciate it. Hope you're enjoying Sin Kisuke and you're going to be enjoying that new drive patch. Yeah, huge shout to the homie Kizzy. Always doing the most, man. Excited to get to see you play a little more often here in Strive and KOF, man. Appreciate you. Nice throw. Shadow X with just solid, safe pressure, and the overhead from K gets stuffed. But it doesn't matter as Light KB gets basically punished for that attempt at busting out. And that's already one character gone, and K looking healthy. He baits the jump forward and gets a jump in for his own troubles here. Amazing use of movement to find opportunities for Shadow X. Yeah, not letting him long get really much opportunities here. Like KB is just trying to find a position where they can start mounting some offense, but Shadow X is stopping that at every turn. Okay. Got the throw. Same side. Hey, and charges it up, drops the knee. Incredible mix from Shadow X. K Dash. Taking control here. See, he saw the Kizzy raid and said, if Kizzy K-Dash is here, you know who's got to be the one doing the work. That's right. 100%. You're, you're, you are not wrong. And, you know, got all that life back. Looking to maybe finish stuff the perfect. I mean, it's tough against Cronin, but like kb has got to muster up every last inch of their strength to try to turn this around. There we go. Ooh, I mean, that, if there was some strength to be mustered, that's a great way to start. Extra damage there, all but jumps into the DP that he backdashed away from. Shadow X gets out of the corner into some more pressure. The roll gets punished. This should be, could have been K out of there, but not quite dead yet. Okay, a little bit of sauce there, spending all the EXs. Is gonna end himself up for a decent mix here. Instead, it's just gonna go meaty. 
Oh, try to punish the trigger, did not work. Light KP with barely any resources, and then finds the slide into DP, Shadow X, OCV, K Dash. Yeah, incredible stuff to be able to take through all of those matchups here, especially with K Dash being the point character. Uh, K is a character that can't really put out the type of damage and mix that you're looking for to be high powered enough to OCV, generally without meter. So he kind of won that point matchup out without really having to spend a thing. That is a, a pretty incredible showing. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I agree. So I mean, Light KV is gonna change things up a little bit if they want to at least get that character down. We see it with the Luong being the point character for Light KV, but then just runs, jumps right in to the trigger launch, and now the Shadow X show is ready for season two. More of the same here. Look at the guard gauge just absolutely getting obliterated here. Had to go for something. Tries to go for the roll. Does escape. But for how long the guard crush comes through. Oh, even get trying to get cute. But Shadow X rolls out immediately. Seeing that mix up. And now simple corner confirm. Didn't quite finish the job there. But the chip damage on the follow up. So big and Shadow X already off to such a good start. Ready? Go. Okay. Ooh. Sweep right away. Finds the air to air, but Shadow X, not deterred, wakes up with standing seed. You know, this is, this is a, a position, a character that Shadow X has fought time and time again. So just cautiously taking their time. Ooh, roll doesn't get punished as big as that time. Shadow X finds another full confirm. Not gonna, not gonna be uh, satisfied with getting mauled there though. It's gonna spend some meter right away. Dashes up for the overhead. Finds air to air, but again, not enough to actually deter Shadow X. He swings out of pressure again. It just not no fear, no fear on defense. Made it work out too. Like he, he's got a, a big chance here. Like, I want to see avoiding a double OCV, but the jump in from Shadow X connects, and already K has such a good lead. Well, it doesn't have the life lead, but momentum is in his favor. Dude, guard cancel comes out, he goes over the fireball, and immediately goes for the jump in here. Once again, completely undeterred, and is able to pull off the double OCV. Incredible stuff from Shadow X. That last corner combo was so good. We are like, warriors featured here. No, we're getting Shinblade. Shinblade oh, and Zaga Rafa. Okay. So Shinblade, Zaga Rafa. So Shinblade, as we just said, coming hot off a win over Reno. Yeah, Zaga Rafa taking out uh, Juan KOF. But this might be just the Shinblade show. There's the corner cross up. And now we got tacos, jump seas, you name it. it we'll see if Zagarafa can figure out Shinblade. Because you see, Shinblade plays this really like give and go play style. He will go in hard and then he'll just stop out right. A big uppercut after the whip crouch D. The super after the fireball toss. Bro. Shinblade, his brain works in a way that. I won't understand, but damn if it's not effective. I was gonna say, dude, he is a he is a, a DP and machine. That commitment with the super after the fireball, Shinblade just has. I wish I was as confident about anything as Shinblade is in the way that he's playing neutral. Like this is unreal for the, again with the DP. He just he knows it's gonna work, so he goes for it. Yeah, he, that's a great mentality to have, honestly. That is force force of respect. You cannot just play this heavy rushdown game. Okay, that time, not a huge punish at the very least. And gets out the court with a taco. I mean, you still got a character down pretty easily. So, you know, dying and get your, getting DP, uh, your punish, yeah, DP punish, excuse me. Not the worst feeling when you got two help, full health characters in the back. Oh my god, raw jump and jump C. It just works. Why the knockdown? Goes for mix. DP comes through, but he rolls underneath. <laughs> Zaga Rafa, okay, listen, Zaga Rafa, the third eye opened. He said, I'm ready for it this time. I won't fall like everyone else. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I would have maybe got hit. I was expecting the command grab, 
At that oh, point, yeah, I got decked. I got decked. I was jumping and I got decked for sure. <laughs> oh gosh, Shinblade, you monster! But it works. It's what took out Reno. Lagarafa better be careful, but at least with uh, Chizuru, I sta stabilized things pretty well. Ooh, that actually whiffed. Interesting little whiff that comes out. Goes for the overhead and finds the knockdown here. Mixup continues, but Shinblade, you're pressing. Even? Oh, the punish! In between the string. Nice with the far D. Nothing huge. Didn't get the super where it didn't seal Kyo's power. Oh, nice. Oh my god, dude. This is, this is not Team Secret Trent. We're not on the same team. It's not working here. Close it out. Kyo has pushed it to the anchor, and Shermi is going to have to be the one from Zaga Rafa that makes it quite the comeback. Yeah, this is one of those positions you don't want to be in. I mean, oh, taking these trades. For right now, that's okay, because there's still plenty of time to get that life back, but if we find the hit, no, nice anti-air right through, catching the short hop, same side. Zagarafa stopped the bleeding. Right. Cronin, four and a half bars. You know what this means. You gotta be a little less committal here. Use that sweep. Use those long reaching normals here from Shermie. Be able to stay out of the danger zone or just jump, you know. All right, taking the highway to the danger zone. Taking a big ride. It's gonna be a good chunk of damage. And we're gonna get nothing crazy. Some respect on the Oki as Shimbley with four bar. Now I think it's time for the shoe shine as he runs up and tries to put pressure. Oh, command grab. Good response. Not quite enough, but this is terrible here. Shinblade has to make something happen. He's gotta find that magic touch. Okay, okay. Zaga Rafa, patience of a monk. You see Cronin sprinting at you. I love that because the risk reward is so smart. The only way you lose is doing something. Mm -hmm. So smart there to just <laughs> ch just chill. Sometimes nothing is significantly better than something. Just just vibe. Yeah, exactly. They 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 saw it, like I know what you want. You have all this bar. It's Chrono with like five meters. You are a, a bomb with a lit fuse, and I don't want anything to do with you. <laughs> is it your first place in Mario Kart? You hear the bullet bill coming behind you, bro. Just, <laughs> just, just chill. <laughs> oh my god. Ready? All right, game number two. The Reno Slayer having to fight his way back, but already a great start with Yori. Okay, finds his DP. He is really consistent with these anti airs. It's just the no fly zone is ridiculous. <laughs> I love that awareness on the mental stack. Keeping it there, but at least Agarafa is just playing play, play a little, a little more patient, finding some hits here and there, adding up slowly. Ooh. Pointing himself though, gets the air to air. Okay, no DP that time from Shinblade. Let's get some jump ins. Oh, God, he's able to get the landing here. Spend some bars with oh. punish. Not huge though, could have been a big turning point. Shinblade still stuck in the corner, but mashes against the overhead, denies it. Extra credit with the EX. And the Rekka from that far! I love the hop over. <laughs> Just completely beats out the attempt of the dash punch there from Zagarafa. Oh, while well, he's still up a game, down a character here in round number two. Shinblade just always finds a way to frame trap. Yep, delay record gets the small punish on the roll, but nothing huge. Mm, yep, at that point, pixel of life left. Shinblade, uh, shooter's gotta shoot. Gotta find something to do here, but Zagarafa kind of understands the situation. Nullifies it great. One character a piece off the table. Ready? All right, let me see run back of this. I mean, Shinblade won the match at the end of it, but Zagarafa with the first big clean hit. Gonna seal Kyo's powers, denying him his flames. For a limited time. Can't even wreck, you know, couldn't even get a wreck a combo. Great for pressure. Plus frames, yup, gotta respect it. And that'll do. Kyo gone. So fast. 
as Agarafa looking way more settled in on this one. Shizuru getting a ton of just really mileage that we just didn't see before. Cronin going to have to be the answer, but there's five bars, so a pretty decent answer ahead of him. Yeah, sometimes Agarafa, I want to get a like, clean hit. Oh, the shots blasted her away for getting cute. That's still two bars and no momentum from it. Do it again. Take the shot. Half-Life gone with two bullets, and there's a third with the block and the punish coming out from Zagarapa. Five bars spent to just take the shots here. Not quite enough to actually finish it off. ED into the clone pressure. This is what you love to see from Chizuru. Yeah, and that'll do it. No thing, nothing to fear with all that bar gone. And Zagarapa Chizuru. Taking it 2-0 and making themselves into the top eight winner side. Promise me some Yamazaki, I'm in. We're going to have the Yashiro on point, though, face off against Kula. First Kula we've seen. That's a, a crazy statistic. Qualifying for top eight is our first Kula. That's right. It's not even the first Yashiro we get to see. So that's even, even kind of amusing when you look at it. But, uh, Akko already just... Using the tools that Kool's got. And, you know, those big buttons. Oh, but speaking of big buttons, Yashra with the hard knockdown and the gnarly cross up. Oh. Spent a ton of bar to try and go for the chip out there. EX Ray Spin does buy a ton of real estate here, but now you're kind of threatened even just by chip. Instead, we just kick her in the forehead. Said it's a big enough target. We'll put the boot on it. Yeah, saw that clean. What a jump. And here comes Mai. I wonder if Paco saw any of Boyko's Mai. And, you know, gonna adapt into that, any of the play style. You know, everyone's got a different flavor of Mai, I feel like. Gets a clean hit. Gonna be in that corner here. They're gonna super camp with the super the ninja bees. Ooh, nice block, though. Same side. Turns his way out with the dash punch here. Ton of real estate gain on those block strings, and it earns the hit here for Lokov. Nice, gets the full corner combo, Half-Life gone, spent the two bars, but well worth it, a huge dent in my life. Ooh, and the, little, the timing change up on the fan, between light and heavy and EX fan, the projectile speed is significantly different, so it's really hard to pace yourself against it if you don't recognize instantly which one she threw. Yeah, exactly. Good, good on Paco for doing that, getting a little bit of life back on there. But now he's got to go up against a character that doesn't really care too much about fireballs. Has a lot of good tools to get around it. Just put it in his pocket for later. I like it. You see it burning a hole in his wallet. Oh, gets the full confirm on the end here. Oh, I love the OTG. Poison's taken down. Oh, get that fan out of here. Just when you thought you were safe, he just... Throws out that pocket sand. Oh, beautiful. Dude, that and the optimization to go for low snake OTG instead of the stomps to keep corner pressure. If Mai gets away, you're not catching her. A, a cornered Mai is a rarity, so take advantage while you can. Definitely, for sure. And again, taking advantage is, is Lokov with this lead. Gets the poison, gets the extension off the CD. That poison ain't going anywhere. Oh! with the CD Lokov. Oh man, a masterclass on, on baiting swings and whiff punishing there. Incredible stuff to take the anchor matchup. Do you want it, Yamazaki? You got this it. Why, this is why I'm here. This is, why I show, this is why I show up every week. Oh my God, so sick. The conversion game is nasty. And we're gonna go back to character select here for Paco. It's like every hit led into a full combo mid screen in the corner. It was just... Every, any opportunity Lokov earned, they took huge advantage. And you just saw, like, Yashiro evaporate. It was just like, he didn't exist. Lokov ready. And now uh, we're going to add Rock to Paco's roster here. I mean, Rock is a character. It's, it's hard to argue with adding him to any team here, especially taking up the anchor position. So we'll have to see if uh, the Ashiro mirror can go a little more his way. Let's see if we can find some more value off of this. Round yeah, I'm interested to see. Ready? Yeah. 
The he self managed? improvement club, both of them worked out at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you gotta be the best version of themselves they can be. But already, uh, Paco with this, you know, he's gotten a little bit of hits beforehand. It's always a race as he gets the bar. Oh, gets the frame trap, cash out level one. Nice roll cough. Just didn't really do anything different. Just kind of a standard guard string. Paco got pressed. And now they're trying to find their way through. There we go. EX. Gonna cash out some more damage. Very nice. Yeah, I like the choice of combo too. To carry uh, a little farther to the corner rather than get a little more damage here. Very nice defense from Lokoff. Able to block that cross up and return to neutral. Damn patience from Paco. Not trying to overextend and get DP'd into something big. So now it's just a battle of the big buttons. Oh, that was from so far! Shadow Strike! Good punish. Nice block on it. And that's a whole bar gone for Lokov. Paco's probably smiling right now saying, Thank you for the gift. It is the it is holiday season, so I really do thank you for that. But the king of the naughty list is here. Big command grab. Oh, but the wake-up DP connects, okay. Yeah, kicking a little too much dirt there as he closes the distance. And Lucky dashes up, that little delay earns him a 5B. Shatter Strike is too far. Oh, Heartbreak behind Heartbreak. The guard cancel doesn't work either, but low snake. Wow, that was um pretty high pace, even for Yamazaki versus Yashiro. Good God. Yeah, that was so crazy. Lokov could have been blown up so bad, but luckily, nothing too bad. Now just building up that bar, knowing that Paco wants to chill full screen, cool. Lokov is just gonna be happy to build meter. Mm, more of that pocket that we saw before. Oh, good extension from Paco. I like it. Go for some more reset, and there was like the throw bait. But nice blocks from Lokov. Very patient. Oh my god, not often you can see that max distance up snake actually connect here. Try to go for Ooh. He tried to, was that like an option select to cover the roll it looked like? Oh, it just didn't work out. Whatever it was, used up a little bit of bar, got a big punish, and the jump in. Alright, rolls out. Pockets are empty. Spent everything just trying to take Mai out on a nice date. But she is stopping any advance right now. Lokov is pressing forward with the anti air. Wow, nice dandy. Being able to stop that out. Gato coming in next. Gato sometimes can have trouble closing the gap on characters that kind of beat him in these ranges. But once he gets there, man, he is just a menace on the frame traps. So, my, really just got to maintain your distance here. CD is going to be the name of the game a lot of the time as we find a dash of throw. Lokov, no stranger to danger, finds that jump B. Gonna burn a little bit of bar here with the level one just to finish the job. Snap the neck. There we go, Lokov taking it down into the anchor fight. But this time we're gonna see the Rock Howard. We had a little bit of Mark of the Wolves matchup here. And it's a great position for Paco. We saw it in the first game. Any one hit, gonna be a lot. Not gonna get a climax out, but we're still gonna see a lot of damage. Half-Life gone. Yeah, cash level one right away. Goes for the guard cancel roll and finds a DP. All of a sudden, Lokov, great advantage here. Oh, but that gets turned on its head right away. Amazing swing out of the corner from Paco. DP. Lokov getting a hit with this corner. I mean, there's not a lot of bar. So it's going to have to earn at least a couple of solid hits to build that up. But Paco gets touched. Oh, damn it, it's turning that up. Yeah, these are two of the highest damage characters in the game on low bar. Look at this damage that's going to come out here. So that's one more EX. Earns an almost earned another one, but didn't even need it. Oh, Lokov with the Gato. What a comeback. Just grinded it out in the corner. Action, we're getting locked and loaded here. It's going to be Robert versus Zagarafa to start out this top eight. That and uh, really underutilized character incoming. Uh, oh, Shermy is going to be playing point actually into the Gato here. So, see how this works out into the match. 
Yeah, the double shiny pick. That's always the fun part about. It. I love how they added these Orochi, Orochi characters and the fact that there it's like, hey, instead of previous games where you only could pick one version, you can have both if you want. Already, great start. Half Life gone on uh, Robert's side, so uh, Zagarafa is just staying you know, patient with the, the, the specials that crouch the anti air, stopping the jump ins. Okay. So a pretty decent job here with the fireballs here. That and just really anticipating a lot of these different angles coming in. Unfortunately, throws the wrong one this time, but it's going to get a huge punish on the DP attempt. Alright, oh, Shermie finished the job. Took Gato out of there. I, I, the, the contrast of regular Shermie being the up close grappler, then oh, Shermie is like, I don't want anything to do with you. Go away. Oh, EX. Good damage with the hard knockdown. The roll away and the punish on it. Oh my goodness, Sagarafa with the call out super cancel. Holy crap, into more Oki. I love it. Absolutely. I mean, oh, oh, Shermie is knowledge check city with the amount of ways she's able to just uniquely block string into her own, uh, like, not only system mechanics, but her own boot. She is pretty ridiculous to have to deal with here. Yeah. Just uh, a lot of damage already done. And like Cronin with this meter, <sighs> he, he can make it happen. But it's like, oh, Shibi's not gonna overextend, but there's the frame trap catching the, the call out. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's able to beat out the Shatter Strike here. Good amount of damage. OTGs. Okay, slidey. Trying to turn this around a little bit. As we're in the corner, so at least one good hit should do it, but doesn't want to get tagged. Okay, there we go. Jump CD for the win, and Robert is finally, you know, finding a way through this, but second Shermie now in the building. Yeah, I was going to say, Shermie's scarier older sister coming up now. I was going to say, but there we go on the DP. Able to stop the jump in there. Little, not quite half the life gone, but a good chunk of damage. It finds another jump in. Always has meter for that super. There's the overhead OTG. Shermie gets out. Has some bar. There's no EXDP available with the jump D. Nice. And it's fought this back in a hurry to make it relatively even here. I mean, the life total is telling one story. The meter telling a very different one here. It's Chizuru coming in. Three and a half bars still left over, even with the EX print. Two, level two lockout. What is a Cronin without a, a DP? That's what he is. We got the slide, we got the punish on your slide. Get that fake combo out of here. Oh my god, he's a dead body, Raph. No DP, no life. Oh, Zagarafa, very nice to seal him out there. That's a really powerful counterplay to Cronin, actually. That's that's sick. I like that idea. I like specifically this Chizuru versus Cronin anchor match. This is this smart. That was good. Yeah, you could it's just it's it's not ingrained in your head when it happens. When you're locked out, you go for your standard combo and you're like, wait, I just use a move that I normally cancel that's putting me point blank at a negative situation. Oops. <laughs> okay, Kula? All right. So it looks like we get our second Kula. Interesting to see. I love, I like people going back to character select and making some swaps. I definitely agree, especially if you're a, like one of these talented players who can play multiple characters at a high level. Sometimes give them a different look. It's really hard to adjust to switches and play styles like this. Yeah, already just seen the slides that are going to most of the fireballs. So that's just a big counterplay, even in just neutral, without any fireballs coming out. Robert's just letting it rock. Oh my gosh. Very neat. He goes for the restand there. Cool as better buttons went out in the air to air. But oh, Shermie with the chop! Oh, there you go. That's hard to react to jumping just to finish the job there. And All right. Robert taking out Oh, Shermie without you know too much trouble. Took a lot of damage, but at the very least, one character down. Oh, beautiful Annie here. Level one super is gonna get Kula out of there. And, you know, great, great use of just awareness, 
reactions, a little bit of meter sprinkled on top. And here we go. Gato is back. But this time, only has to deal with regular Sherman. Okay. Gonna jump in. Couldn't get anything afterwards here. Great throw from Zaga. Oi! Wakes up with a Shatter Strike. That's one thing I think that we always say is like, as far as regions go, you can always pull out pieces of their playstyle. Mexico's uh -huh. insanely good with Shatter Strike. They just have like a crazy sense for when to use it. Oh, yeah. And we've seen it so much tonight work out so well. But things are not looking well for Robert here. As Zagarafa finds a level two with the big damage on top of there. Oh, try to get cute with it. But nice check. And then empty jump command grab. That's going to do it, and it's all down to Cronin once again. That has a much more positive outlook on it this time, though. Coming in with the meter lead. A little less characters to have to deal with here, but that standing C into the sweep right afterwards. Yeah. Some advantage gained here from Robert after the hit, though. Oh, good anti here. Did you seem to see other stuff besides Crouch C? A nice avoidance of the command grab. Full punish. Didn't spend a lot of resources, so this is a, a really good look for Robert. Yeah, dude, being able to save that much bar coming into this. Now, a truly even match coming in this time here. Robert, a little bit of hesitation here. Doesn't want to overextend too much. Shizuru obviously doesn't want to throw the clones in lazy positions here. Is able to get the hit with the EX. Finds that knockdown. Is able to go for the lockout. Mix-up time. Half-Life gone. Nice. I like that. Instead of going for a, any kind of extreme, just gets the grab. The unlock. We've been unlocked. And here comes that big damage. Doesn't cash out. Wants to leave it to a one-touch situation. Because now with three bar. Robert can finish it. Let's see. And takes the shot, is able to wake up with the normal, the wake up 2A. So brave from Robert to fight that one out. Be able to take the kill here, evening the games up. I feel like on stream, we've had a ton of 2Os tonight. Robert said, listen, not me. I won't go to the wayside. No, not at all. That was honestly superb. I love just keeping the meter, knowing that I'm in a situation where a crouch A hitting will finish the job. All I need to do is connect my little BS light attack, and that's it. That's, you know, surgical precision on the amount of life that uh, Zagarafa had so Robert can finish it. That was you know, outstanding. All right. One game apiece going to the final game here. Top eight winners. Zaga Rafa, already, already a standout performance to even be at the top eight winner side, but it looks like maybe we have a... Taking a second for ourselves? No, we're ready to go, okay. Maybe a little bit of delay at the beginning here, but it looks like they're both just play. All right. Off to a nice start. I like, we got another switch up with the Gato against the Oshermi, and it's working out pretty well. Not giving her any room to breathe. Shatterstruck though, no punish. Ooh. Gets a command grab. And there's the whiff punish with the crouch C. Robert finally takes out Ursh. Oh, finally takes out Oshermi without much of a problem. And now sets up a great uh, game for themselves. Shermie jumping uncontested. Gets a jump CD, putting God on the corner. Empty command grab. Grapplers with mobility. KOF is not a game for everyone because these grapplers are built different. Hey, just like that, able to find the throw and you say built different. He ain't wrong. Here comes the level one to follow two, one touch now. And is able to find it pretty easily on the follow-up. That low crush was so smart. Blew out that crouch B. Really good decision there from Zagarafa. And we evened it up pretty quick. Oh. Like you said, those powerful shatter strikes. Connects for Robert. That's great damage. Okay. Found a touch again. Sweep. Rolls backwards on wake up, but after the jump through. 
Zaga Rafa still taking control here and leaves himself for mix and what is that left right? Oh my god! <laughs> No one was ready. Robert wasn't ready. And you saw immediately after Robert like got out of the combo, went for EX spin, Rafa gets the block, finds the crouch C, makes him use meter, and now it's just down to Cronin one more time. We saw the comeback before. But can Saga Rafa stay solid and prevent Cronin McDougal from putting on a show again? Oh my god, that shot. Bro, the big dude, so what was that roundhouse kick? Be able to put it down. Oh my god, the shatter strike so impactful to win it out again. Those combat boots look like they hurt. That was just a gnarly call out. All down to this to see who will get into that winner's finals between these two. Anchor be anchor. The opportunities can be tough though, especially with the EX going for the run up here. Had the hit, didn't get the full combo, unfortunate. And now we trade spaces in the corner, I like that. Just get out immediately. Has to be careful. Three bars on the Cronin. Ooh. Another drop into the confirm for Robert. Who just needs at least two more solid hits with that amount of meter that they have right here. Zogger off, it doesn't even have a bar to escape. Hey, push to the wall, gets the hit. Maybe I'll spend the meter here. Should be just enough. Hey, and it is just enough for Robert. Once again, the sharpshooter prevailed, and Cronin's able to take the kill to leave it two to one. At the end of this set. Very nice stuff for Robert. Yeah, every little time, capitalizing so well on Zagarov. Access to shots to roll back neck code, dude. Holy moly! But here we go. Lokov's gonna start the Yamazaki actually into Benny Mara, which I do think this is a pretty favorable matchup here, just because. It can be difficult for Yamazaki, uh, for Benny Mara, excuse me, uh, to close the gap as we can see early on in this one. Yeah, it's gonna be Tamago having to make like some solid choices with how he spends, like uses the specials. But CD is just taking Benny Mara to the curb, apply a little bit of poison, give a quick spank. And now just the safe jump as well. We don't even try to build bar, right? We're not even going for a bar building, you know, uh, Punish. We're just saying, hey, stand A, that's enough. And a Blue Mary in December 2022. I never thought I'd see the day. It's been a while. I mean, the character is still pretty viable here. Obviously, has really good reversals. And is great at spending meter with uh, with things like the, uh, the EX Slide and Speedball as well. So, definitely has some sauce to work with. Yeah. Volkov in the corner. He's got to avoid some of this. Jump B. The patience there, just to wait it out. Another grab, catching these wake ups, trying to just open up Lokov in just, you know, simple ways. And it's been working. Nice Not following for the follow up there. He's gonna go for stomp, stomp into the corner. Oh, great snake cancel to keep it relatively safe. Big throw, too, and Lokov looking to take two characters. Nice jump the yes, what such a good jump, dude. He just he like he he said he sniffed the air and said something's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel the slide. I can feel the slide coming. Ready? Yeah, with, with, with a nose like Yamazaki's, he definitely can smell that for sure. Oh, well, well, <laughs> oh okay. Fresh on the same side, finds a throw again. It's a little life. And there's Ooh. two. Nice. Perfect. If that wasn't, if that didn't chip, it would have been. Spelled the Zashver to Maga, so I'm glad he called it out right. And now we unlock the Rock Mirror match. And you know, when you play Rock Paper Scissors, sometimes you both like to pick Rock. Oh my God! But this is the rare case where Rock does beat Rock. Look at that counter here. Finds the two A as well. Nice extension from Lokov. All right, yeah, adding more pressure. Oh, there's another command grab, and then DPing after. I love that from Lokov, but Tamago said no sir. Oh my god, so sick from Tamago there. Had an opportunity to spend the climax, but had confidence in his offense and is rewarded by coming to this next round with almost three meters instead of zero. That is a huge deal. Mm -hmm. 
combo is just so solid. Even though like Blue Mary didn't get a play, Rock is more than enough here. Got the whiff he wanted, but unfortunately took a too big of a step backwards. The pressure. Guard gauge is hurting big time. It's gonna force Tamago yet. Have to use meter for the guard cancel. And gets the counter on the jump B. Tamago denying this and blocks the DP. Full jump and punish. This is huge. Great damage on that confirm. Setting up another strong uh, two, uh, two touch scenario. <laughs> oh, he said, let me show you how to do it. He says, no, 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 you got it all wrong. Hold on, watch. <laughs> we saw every version of Shatter Strike. We got raw Shatter Strike with Cancel Shatter Strike. And then the Shatter Strike that beat the not Shatter Strike. Oh my god. I love it. <laughs> At some point, they were just tired of playing the traditional game of RPS. They just went all in. Yeah, said, I'm, God. I'm, I'm tired of neutral. I want to fight. <laughs> Double shatter strike. <laughs> oh my God. First game down to Mago. Able to come back from uh, a hell of a deficit, I will say. Lokov Jamazaki was really off the races. Looking to do it again here in this second game. Yeah, already half guard bar gone. That's just incessant corner pressure. Without any bar to bust out, it's just super tricky. Rolls away, but now it's stuck in the other corner. Okay. Snake, what a whiff punish there. The commitment on the run up. I don't think it's going to be quite enough, but still one touch. Anything will do it. You know when you're in a bad position. When you die to uh, the guard cancel, the guard attack. Once that kills you off of there, you know, oh man, I messed up. Yeah, poison puts you at 0 0.005 HP. <laughs> he looks at you funny and you die. Yo, oh. the range of the command grab. That was so perfect. Tomorrow just struggling to find any space against Yamazaki. Okay. Air to air went out, looking good. It's a throw, but Lokov gets out of the corner, rolls away, and wins the command grab and the neutral. The short hop, EX, into the CD. Oh my god, these sequences. So, Lokov died to Rock in game one. But with three characters, with, you know, Yamazaki being at just almost full life, Rock's gonna have to, you know, go extra hard. Okay. Oh, based out the parry. Tries to go for the EX command. Throw a nice jump. Tamago snipped it out. Gets that knockdown. Safe jump coming. Okay, what a press there. Put him in the corner. That situation for Lokov here. Try to go for a counter. Didn't work. That's going to be up the back going down. And okay, Tamago's starting that comeback. One down, two to go. Yeah, and having two bars. Still in a really healthy situation here at Lokov. At this point, unless you're pretty sure you can kill, you just got to minimize your usage of meter. And as I say that, EX Rising Tackle does a grip of damage. Mm -hmm. with a lot of bars still on their side. Oh, but gets to confirm. Beautiful. Now we're at getting a point where Chip can make it happen. Doesn't get the punish of the counter. Wait a minute. Tamago trying to get cute. Lock. Guard cancel rolls away. He wants to reestablish. Ah, oh, reestablish some space. But the space, unfortunately, kind of leads him to his own demise. The jump in dealt with incredibly well from Lokov. And sometimes just being able to get your pressure on the ground is just as good as the anti here. Yeah, really nice. Just found that perfect crouching B just to catch the recovery. And now Tamago is getting sent to the character select. So we, we know Blue Mary didn't really didn't do much. She used bar, whiffed it, couldn't get a command grab or find like any rhythm. So I feel like that's probably the character that's going to go now that Tamago can switch the roster. 
I was looking through the bracket, by the way, and I just want to give everyone an update if you haven't seen the bracket. We have Shadow X versus Super Grenis playing for a loser's top eight spot, and Paco and Reno playing for a loser's top eight spot. Just a heads up of what's going on in loser's bracket right now. That's unbelievable. We'll have an update about that after this game, but good God, the fact that that is occurring is unreal. Oh, dude. Thank you, Proxy, for the breaking news. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, just, I got I, the eye in the sky. I'm in the helicopter just looking over bracket. That's okay. And now we return <laughs> back to our match in progress. <laughs> Lokov and Tamago, game three. Winner of this gets to face off against Robert in that uh, winner's finals here. So we got Kua, which is a big, it's, a, it's, a, it's definitely an upgrade. Going from the bloom area. You already see Yamazaki putting under so hard pressure. Absolutely. And Janae joining the squad as well. Yamazaki really just not being able to handle everything that Kula is able to bring out. Goes for the double overhead and a perfect. This, If there was a turnaround that Tamago needed, this is it. Good lord. Hey, there is no better character you could bring out to tell your opponent, hey, chill out. Man. <laughs> Okay. Is on. EX Rage Run was trying to go for the frame trap there. It doesn't work out. Tamago not afraid to swing. Ooh. Greedy P. Just get back and forth. You don't have to spend yeah, a lot of bar to get this damage and try to bring this back, so it's going to be all on uh, Lokov. Mm, but unfortunately, his roll cornered him. A great combo from Tamago to reestablish this space. Counter. Use up a little bit of bar. But at least. Didn't get punished. Oh, the beautiful jump on Wake Up avoids the command grab. And that's Rock gonna get knocked out. Dude, cool. Uh, just unbelievably strong being able to handle all of this. Each character in a row. Gato, this is not a great matchup for Gato either. He's coming into definitely something that's not his favor. If only just for the 2B. Cool is so good at beating him in footsies with that 2B. Just, yeah, just a big reverse of game number two. But we saw Yamazaki do the same thing, but at least it looks like Kula's going down. So, Lokov can breathe a little easier. So, what do you feel like Lokov's got to do to get past the Rock and Bichonet? Dude, the hardest thing here is managing your meter. Like, when, when Janae comes in, if we make it there, we've got to have some kind of resources to be able to compete with her because she is so hard to pin down. So definitely, we got to have some resources to make our hits count here. And so far, Hookup doing a good job of being able to manage those resources, but the roll gets punished. I'm not sure if that's what they wanted to put themselves in the corner in a punishable position. That damage just adds up uh, for Tamago. Little by little, what a DP. Nice. Awesome, very good. Jump back CD, and that should be enough with the DP cancel into Shining Knuckle. Tamago makes it to winner's finals 2 to 1 over Lokov. Yeah, honestly, just off the back of an incredible swap to Kula. Just ridiculous pressure and uh, just power being able to be maintained with that character. She gets so much per hit in terms of like damage, corner carry, just just everything. There have been whip warriors who have shown yes. you what's up. Shots so, off, man. <laughs> Coach Steve and Boyko. So Coach Steve fighting his way from losing his first game in winter's side, battling it back. Let me check to make sure before I move forward, just to, just to see, but Gato versus Whip, kind of a tough one here. Gato, really one of the only weaknesses he has is that his range is a little stubby on certain situations. Whip, definitely a character that can take advantage of that. Yeah, for sure. Pretty boy coaches. It's a nice patient style too. Get the cross at the last second. That was, everyone got hit. And I wanted to look back just to make sure before I said it, this is a run back. Coach Steve actually lost 2-0 to Boyko early. Okay. Oh, was, that, was that a punish? It didn't say punish, but the DP hit so far away that Boyko recovered so fast. Yeah, maybe it was so late that it didn't even register it as a punish. But yeah, that looked like punish on hit. So far, the whip putting in overtime again. Like we said, didn't even see it last that we saw Boyko on stream. Yeah, and I don't want to, you know, I think Coach Steve's trademark character is the Mai. So good with it. 
very mobile, very good character for a you know big Marvel player and such a legacy player like Coach Steve. Yeah, it's nice to see. It's nice to see uh, really sick content creators who have uh, put on tournaments as well, uh, continuing to do so well. Coach actually put on a ratio tournament recently that went incredibly well, from what I've heard. Awesome. Gotta love it. But, like you gotta love this big damage that Coach Steve's gonna get. Gets the the anti throw tech, but jumps right into a close close C. So takes the damage. We're gonna cash out here. No, we're just gonna get the hard knockdown. And now it's game time. But great stand D to get the anti air. Uh, recognizing that situation was gonna work out there, is able to find the sweep of the legs. Dude, whip might just get the OCV. This would be an incredible story here to see the whip pulled out and just run over three games straight. Cronin, got something to say about it though. Yeah, because they fought first for winners, right? Who knows what team Boyko used, but already blocks the close D, the first close DVC of the set. Already avoiding it, but a great DP for close D. Throw though, gets out of the corner, trade comes out. Block on the shoe shine. Again, the block on the overhead. Two for two on those. Oh my gosh. That was a great card cancel. That was a great guard cancel roll. In the end, he didn't get the hit off of it, but is able to maintain enough pressure from the situation to turn it into a kill here. Boyko. This has been the problem, though. I'll see. I'm interested to see how Coach Steve, or my player himself, can climb over this wall. Yeah. Not for nothing. We've seen how well Boyko's Mai can do. Nice punch to Shoe Shine. Putting on great pressure. And uncontested, too, but again, a block on the. How does he block his overheads? I don't know. He was so ready for it, though. Plenty of meter. He's going to go for the advanced cancel. It's going to be not quite enough, but still a great situation here. Oh my god. And then caught the roll because it's so active and slow. Cronin tried to get out of dodge, but the knees do it. Oh my goodness. That there you go. This boy ko my is, is out of this world. Yeah, I am I don't know if I am just like not studying players as hard as I should. Or if Boyko's coming out of nowhere, I, this is my first time seeing him play, and I'm so thoroughly impressed. I'm a fan. This guy is ridiculous. <laughs> Again, we talked about the region. Mexico's killers. You never know when another one's going to show up. All right, so Coach Steve, on his last legs, one, you know, has to take two games straight to stay alive in here. Well, we kept everything the same for Boyko, and Coach Steve also keeping the order the same, but at least this time has a small life to start things off. Nice jump in. Good reset of the pressure here. Half the guard gauge gone. It's starting to get adjusted to these little short hops that Boyko is going for. Oh, great EXCP. Good call out. Steve just not afraid to use the bar just to maintain momentum and keep Boyko on one side of the screen, but Boyko just with little hits bring him, kind of bring himself back in. Another EXDP. Great. Dude, Coach is laming Whip out right now. This is incredible. Finds his one shot finally when she's cornered. He goes in. Yeah, Whip has been ineffective. Standy Annie here, but the cross up. Uh oh. Tick, tick, tick. 13 seconds here. Level 2 is going to come out. Good amount of damage. Not enough to kill. Ooh, the low after all that. The 50 50. You're going to worry about the cross up, jump, or the low attack. Can Boyko salvage that, that uh, first character? Okay, nice trade. The hop over gets the hit. Look at the life bar here from Boyko. Still managing to find some value, but Coach Steve, 54 seconds left on the clock, and they get most of that chunk back. Looking really strong. That was a thing of beauty. And now the, the my fight. Okay, we got the, the mirror match here. As Coach in the yellow and uh, Boyko in the traditional red. Great confirm off that. Catching the jump. Beautiful. Coach Steve converting pretty much everything. He's dominated this this mirror match, 
and just one good touch away. There it is, jump CD. All right, Coach D now sitting in the driver's seat, two characters strong. Okay. Yeah, that's where he handles it. Going for the jump CD is obviously an incredibly strong button to be able to approach with here and look for the 2C as well for the anti air. Blocks here from Coach Steve, and especially getting out of there with the, the guard cancel roll in the corner here. But manages to jump out and keeping it competitive, not letting Sherman get started. Oh, he avoids the shoot as well. Really, really nice jump there. Good amount of damage coming through. Not going to be quite enough, I don't think. Yeah, just look for the standing reset. Oh, pixels left. Steve. Just needing any little thing in the trade will do it. The GameStop trade in Coach D's favor makes the profit and ties it up one to one. So we're taking, taking it to the final game. Do you think we maybe see a character swap here? Or do you think, I don't think Whip is the pro. Whips has seemed really, really good. Even in this game where he lost the point war or that he barely won the point war, uh, Whip felt fine. Yeah, I honestly don't think any character was a problem for Boyko. It was just Coach Steve just, you know, tightened up made adjustments and just took it to him. So we're gonna see a Bijanae instead of the whip. You know, so Boyko is making some big changes just to kind of turn this around, especially putting Maya as the anchor and bringing Shermie in the middle. Because I, I like the Shermie versus Cronin anchor match, but it's definitely going at, at a different way. So we'll see how this works out for Boyko as we go to our final game of the set. Dude, and what a set it has been. Coach Steve fighting his way back. The, the little adjustments he's made in character matchups have been world class so far this set. For sure, 100%. Alright, so we got the, you know, another Mark of the Wolves matchup. BGNA versus Gato. Uh, Boyko fighting that first hit. Now has the meter to make some really big damage happen. Just has to be on top of it. Finds the jump B. Oh my goodness. We get the full confirm, but is just running over uh, Coach Steve right now. Oh, what a whiff punish, though. Very nice stuff. Spending the EX. Good amount of damage. And rolls out of the mix up there. Very smart. Yeah, it's too good defensively. But I like, I like it. Coach Steve even the sub really well. And it's just putting these normals in great spots. Oh my god, but the EX DP wins again. Coach, Coach had that one punish on hit DP in the first game and has not gone for a DP that wasn't EX since. He says it's not worth the risk. I respect that. <laughs> oh my goodness. And off to a great start already. Okay, the jump in though, that should be enough, yeah. Coach keep caught with him. And because there's so much time left on the clock. Oh my god. Uh, you know, just <laughs> full climax. Still has three because. meters. <laughs> it was a freebie. He was put it, putting on a free show, okay? Everybody gets a, a free sample, you know? But you definitely you gotta sign up for uh, Twitter Blue and support Shermie on social media, right? He said, he said just to feel something. Oh my god, the cross up. I mean, good rollout from Steve that time, yeah. Remembering, yeah, this character's jump C is, gnarly, is a nasty cross up. And finds a full confirm, so that's good for Steve. Nice yeah, reset there, goes for the strike throw, doesn't work out. EX to try and get out of the corner, does find the throw. Boy, go back in control after a little bit of a scramble back and forth. So just trying to play the runaway game. Doesn't want to be up close with Shermie whatsoever, but at some point you're gonna have to start putting on some aggression and trying to challenge. Great. Oh! Try to match the throw out of it. Oh, ho, ho. Not even really any command grabs. It was just all the close C's in the world. Dude. Catching Oops. Coach Steve just trying to get out of dodge. The Shermie's close C is such a crime, dude. What a crazy ant here. Okay. Easy. I mean, Shermie has paid for her crimes now. <laughs> Kills her with the level two. Mai coming in, max meter. 
How are you gonna spend it here? Dude, this is not really the character you see with like the, the anchor position with all this bar. I mean, she does have a really useful climax. Oh my god, how does he keep getting these nasty cross ups? Every time it's just always so perfectly spaced. That one. Hop over. Trying to play this neutral hop game. It is working out for the most part here, but it's still getting forced on defense occasionally. You should do it with the max mode combo. Absolutely will. Boyko off the climax is going to be able to take it. Aya. Coach Steve going to go down two to one. Boyko, incredible oh, showing. No, 100%. Just the, the, the bodies that he has left so far in just tonight's Great tournament. Job. All right, so Super Grenis with the, 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 the usual Joe Higashi versus Mai. But then just a jump in. We're not zoning. We're, we're just going to get this jump in and start the party. Okay. Presses out after the slide. Tries to go for the media afterwards here. The fireball, the slow fireball, does get the punish. And he finds another jump in. Look at this aggression coming out. Doesn't want to let my run away. Doesn't want her to have the chance to, to counter zone. So I like this different approach. Just playing Joe a lot more offense oriented. Ooh, nice punish. Slide, drops the knees. Slide punish there with the fan. Good opportunities here. Paco taking control. Hey, good target combo. Wasn't enough to do the job, but is just needing. A little bit of chip, but a roll throw from Super Grenis. Surprisingly worked. And there's the uppercut denied. Alright. Gato coming into this is going to be kind of tough here. Obviously, a character that's hard to approach, but. Uh, Especially hard to approach when you're whipping DPs in the neutral, a tough one. Oh, it's meaty fan to run up block. Let's see what how Super Gunners responds. Now Paco just happy. I've, I've got a character up. I've got a fireball. I've got a punish. Okay, here we go. Yeah, uses the bar. And now we can have all this room to just play that lame my if he wants. Oh my god, what a preemptive anti-air. And he's able to get the jump in for the kill. All this meter, no place to spend it. Gato, I feel like, almost doesn't get to play the game. Not at all. Yeah, after the big DP getting, like, blocked and just ending it. Paco got a net positive life back after going into that uh, round with, you know, less. Crazy. For punish doesn't get much and rips the DP is gonna be able to take the kill. Salvage most of that meter here. Still three and a half. Wow. Paco. Yashiro coming in. See if we can find these knockdowns. Pressure him out here. You've got to be willing to throw the armor out, I feel like, in this matchup against Cronin, or you will get bullied. Oh, stay CD in here. But then just wake up, crouch A. Nothing big from it, but. Super Grand is showing, okay, I'm gonna fight back. Again! Tech Crouch A connects! Gonna be some great damage here. Not gonna spend any more meter to finish off Yashiro. It just needs one good solid touch. Yashiro also not gonna spend too much meter off of that one there. Got an opportunity, but was unwilling to spend. Blocks, cross up attempt, gets the hit, and this time we're gonna cash out. Simple combo into level one, I like it. Give him a bonk. And now guess for game, and there you go. Paco, game one. Pretty handy, only losing one and a seven, like one and a half characters. Yeah, and I feel like really the, the exclamation mark on that was just my versus Gato. Again, didn't really feel like Gato ever had a chance in that fight. That was a really, really tough one, but they're not going to swap order here. They're going to keep it rolling in the same order, which 
if you are doing this, this tells me you have a lot co of confidence in Joe to do better in this match here, mm -hmm. which I think is reasonable because uh, Gato can do fine against everything else on this team. You've just got to do your best to, to not let him fall victim to a full health buy again. It's tough. It's because you can see like Super Grenos doesn't get a, doesn't play the same style against Mai, and it, he's getting tagged a lot, trying to get around Mai preemptively. Okay. Very active with the hops for sure. Okay. Look at that though. Oh, okay. Pressure's coming up. No guard break. There it is. Oh man, this is flashbacks of the past patch here. Try to go for the DP, the knees beat it clean. What a, oh my God. That looked like it hit on the front side and then hit on the, the, the landed on the other, but good for Super Krennus and that time gets the DP. Okay, mission accomplished for Joe. The legendary Joe hair hitbox on that DP. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, there's just enough gel to just poker. There's just, just enough damage. Oh my gosh. Okay. Now Paco's got a lot to do, but Yashiro's one to do it. Level one, nice. He doesn't go too crazy to finish the job. He's at least find the hit somehow. Okay, there's that DP. Three bars built up here. Joe is a destructive character with meter here. Be extra careful. Not get tagged by much. Has to even be careful too. You jump one bad fireball, you get climax in the face. Oh, oh no. Too much damage coming out there. Paco, great to get back in control of this. And now a very manageable situation despite the meter. Very true. Attempt. Guard cancel beats out the attempt at extending the block string there with the overhead. I can use the meter up. Get 50% damage here into the whip. Jump in. There's the low. What do you know? There you go. And now it's all down to Rock Howard. Yeah, amazing uses of the empty lows there. Being able to get as aggressive as he pleases. Oh, Rock, two and, a, two and a half bars, almost three. Gets thrown on the high jump in. No, the whiff! Oh, he got the crumple on the EX. He whiffs the DP. Paco, full control, two and a half bars. Standing pressure in the corner. The Ryzen Taco hits on both sides, and the command grab finds a home. Level one to finish it. There we go. And now we have the meet the final characters to round this out. Oh man, Paco threatening set point here, but Grenius, he's got the magic number three meters. Shoe shine, nice block. This is some great corner pressure from Paco. I love the far B into the Repukin. He's just forcing Super Grenis to try to make an attempt to get out, but it's just not working. Oh, oh my gosh. Spinning the bar, finds the hit again. EX coming through. Here we go. Oh, guess for game. Empty nothing. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Big chance here. Either player can finish the job. Command Grab whips and the shoe shine punish. Super Grenis stays alive in the set, ties it up 1 1, avoiding the Command Grab just barely. I think that this tournament has been the most I've ever seen Rock Command Throw whip. Maybe we're starting to figure, because it felt like the first couple weeks of people being like, wow, this thing is insane. It just felt unstuck. It was like 100% hit rate for everyone. Like, we're, mm -hmm. we're finally jumping it, dude. <laughs> Oh my god. Well, it's like, yeah, I, I, I like it. It's just like, hey, there's a chance that they, people are doing frame traps, sure, but the fear that Command Grab has gotten so strong, made, you treat it like a grappler. So there you go. Man, I'm so glad we get a game three between these two. Uh, game two saw Super Venus Joe doing a great job to start things off. But uh, Paco looks like to be the driver's seat to start things off here in game number three. 
Yeah, much better here. And part of the keys to success for Grandis was actually the Joe doing significantly better in this point matchup here. So this is a tough one for sure as he tries to go for the cross-up. Does get out of the corner, but Paco fights him straight back into it. What a jump arc to take here. Ooh, interruption. Really good bust out. But what is it worth at that point? You got a little bit of damage, sure. But you are still just hurting. Even using bar to get my way full screen. I don't know if that's going to be worth it in the end, but at least he's finding some hits. Oh, he DPs again. Yeah, I don't... I mean, that is like a pretty unreal amount of confidence there to be spending bar on guard cancels, right? Like, that is like... You're really betting on yourself. Yeah. I mean, like, 100% agree. Ended up with two still because of the free bar he got. So not like the worst position, but yeah. You do their masters of their crowd, so they're definitely no more than a man than I ever will. And now the wall of Gato, but it's tough because like Paco has no incentive to move forward. Yeah, honestly, truly, at this point, I mean, Super Grand is still doing the same thing, just punching fireballs. Not a care in the world. No reason to overextend. See that big something up. All this respect, I just would have made it out. Okay, gets an anti air. Looks like Paco's the first one to overextend a little bit. Punish, oh. there we go. God, what a guard cancel, so smart. And he's gonna cash out the bar just to make sure she dies. Taking out the point war. <laughs> oh, evening us up on characters now. Back and forth in this final game. Yeah, so that's a character. Super Gundus really needed to get out of there. So now we have like pretty much even life. I mean, Meter is definitely on Paco's side. And we know how well Yashiro can throw that out there when he gets those small hits. And with Super Gundus in the corner, I just have to deal with these, but busts out because that's not a true guard string. Oi, whiff punish! Oh, Paco, all this meter. How do you get access to spending it, though? Defense looking unstoppable from Gato, but until there, he finds a hit. And level two, okay. Finally gets an opportunity. Spends a lot of cash with the extra damage on there. And the CD is going to finish the job. Beautiful. That, that was pretty much all it was, was just CD fishing for a hit. As soon as Paco could get any kind of confirm, not wanting to, like, go for a, even a huge jump in get too close to go for like a low that's so smart and now we're just trading every which way oh shoe shine takes out yashiro that crouch c so so good and now final characters in the final game Okay, finds the air there. A lot of pressure off of that. Already to the corner here, but Paco shows he's not afraid to swing the 5C into the 2Bs. One, mm hmm. Overhead, and now it's party time. Yes, for game! Uppercut, super cancel. Wait a minute. Paco said, never says never. But now with one bar, any little thing. You gotta be just so careful with your Paco. Oh, I love that guard cancel now. Full control in the corner. Oh my god, the punish on the whiff. You mentioned it before, he keeps on whiffing. Ooh, chance. Big chance. Overhead. Chance. So much damage. Shining Knuckle, though, he's going to save it. Has the one bar to trade? The shoe shine, and that'll do it. Super Granis toughs it out, eliminating Paco to fight the best in the world and they're going at it here tonight absolutely i mean we saw a little blue mary earlier from tamago he said no more mr nice guy you know i'm not gonna not gonna give you those ones away now no free games on the blue mary he's gonna go straight into it and he's gonna start janae so it's gonna be the coolest in the middle situation here we'll see how that plays out in the end but for now gato getting kind of a weird hit against uh, janae kind of restanding her in the corner but she lands and swings that's yeah, twice. I mean, the like, PJ is gonna be in the air. You can backdash going for Harrier, any little thing. There's a knockdown from Rolling Thunder. A lot of pressure here, especially with no resources for uh, Robert. But now, if he gets a hit, he can at least get 
get something a little going, just have to be careful. Oh, the jump beam again. That button's so good. Yeah, I mean, one of the major things you have to be careful for. Try to go for the fireball just to represent the pressure there. Didn't get too much, but unfortunately, the whiff is too far. Robert is swinging for the fences. And just like that, bye bye. Sending Gato out with a throw. Tamago with the early lead here to start things off as both players are getting geared up in our winners' finals. Okay, close we'll seat. Doesn't Tamago doesn't bite. I like his patience here. Oh, backed it way off here. Robert valuing the corner space more than anything here, continuing to give all this room to Tamago, and it's paying off. But Tamago's still trying to fight. Playing a little scrappy. Nice uppercut. And then he has a stare down. Tech throw. Oh no. EX comes out with more damage from the Harrier. Hey, and wakes up with that normal. I mean, 2B really has just been like one of the most impactful buttons of the patch, dude. Her 2B is just like meta defining at points. <laughs> yeah, definitely the tip of the top of these great crouching normals. And continuing. Now it's Tamago's turn. I like what you did with that button. It's my turn. I want to press crouching B. Ooh, C finds it there again for Max Distance. Didn't get the combo, but still the frame trap works out. Finds the reset, Robert. I'm willing to give up the ghost on this one. Oh my god, wake up C. Too far away for anything. And this is big. Is Robert's going to get more, more damage here? Is going to cash out? No. Off to save the bar. Gets the safe jump into the hit. And Tamago's gonna lose the Kua. Robert bringing that back. Dude, even if that hadn't killed, there was the potential for a stun was how much pressure Robert was able to put out there. Incredible way to turn that around. Big time. And has all this meter still? Bringing up against the rock? Any damage like this? Oh my god, this is just how it goes. Kua just gets going. It's like that snowball coming down the cliff, or coming down the mountain, just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Low and then kill. Oh, and then the X ray spin. Oh my god. Robert is so greedy, greedy, and I love it. The, the, the patience to wait like just a half a second. See the EX counter come out and just go for the EX spin. Perfectly spaced. Punishing it and finishing the job. Incredible turnaround from robert oh my god going up one yeah and with that much of an exciting game uh it's very exciting for me to get to remind you guys that since this is winter finals we're gonna get a three out of five out of these two so a lot more good ko up to be played between the two as robert finds a crazy jump in the start you're telling me we get possibly five games of these two get out Oh my god, dude. <laughs> Always so ridiculous here. Just mashes the 2A. Just to punish the roll. Very smart. EX. Good for Robert's Gato going in the distance. Even stun being a factor here. And the chip to finish the job. No escape. Alright. Cool. Uh, I mean, this has been the... Uh, <laughs> Really the big winner of the of both of these teams so far. Gee, Robert looking much healthier this time though. Oh, cross up! Avoided the fireball after the EX spin. Ice ball even. And he gets that full confirm into the reset. Nice block from Tamago, makes the escape. And two B into spin. There we go. Yeah, a punish there. Really, really good timing on the guard cancel to go through. Fun to throw as well. Strike throw game, obviously incredible from Kula, but the DP, you know, it, it's pretty good. Yeah, not, not bad, not bad at all. D, DP, but he needs an uppercut. We got the twirl. Tamago just at least trying to get rid of Gato, but at this point, Robert can get two characters knocked out if he just lands a solid hit. Either a Crouch C or a Close C can finish the job for him, at least on this Kula. Oh my gosh, what a run up. Mm, to be into nothing. Chills, goes for the Ice Breath, baits the DP! He's gonna kill Robert! He doesn't! He spins the meter! The greediest! I love it! Robert is the. Uh, he is uh, he's Scrooge! He is Scrooge in it oh in this winner's God. finals, man. He is holding back 
all the money, not giving it up at all, and he has no reason to. Oh. Immediately closed out by Rock, though. It was the ghost of Christmas past. Got these hands. <laughs> he spread the wealth, baby. Give it up, Scrooge. Oh, this, this is the version of Christmas Carol I always hoped for. <laughs> Just say, oh, this going to be the shining knuckle straight away. A third of the life off the table. Rock represents the pressure here. And the staggered pressure with the fireball. Does get the roll up, but no punish. Oh, God. From every range, hits the crouch B, and now it's just party time. I mean, it's still a, a, a lead for Tamago. If he can get rid of the problem, it'll be great, but giving Robert so much respect and Robert's taking advantage of it. Standing C was sick, but there's a 2B in response. After that attempt with a standing reset, not gonna work out. Okay, big grab. Ooh, the chase down, but doesn't catch! Ramp forward, maybe to catch the roll, but doesn't work out. And Robert with the super cancel goes up two games to none. Tamago's not usually one to mess up those kind of hard read plays. It yeah, just looks like Robert like snuck out. And I think the craziest thing about it is that how much Tamago knew about it. That exact situation happened one like instance before. He goes for the short hop overhead, lands in a situation where he's not plus. Tamago throws him out of it, and Robert rolled backwards. Next interaction, Tamago's ready for the rollback. Like you said, that's not a play he misses very often. Yeah, so. Jams for game three. <laughs> it's got a. I mean, I don't know if the the, the slow jams are going to be the jams are going to be enough. Might need to pick up the pace because there's so much to do here. We never even made it to Cronin. You know, Robert is just. Happy to be the cooler machine. Okay, here. Empty low. That is just disgusting. Character so cold. Who else does a super on you than the poses? Right on from full screen after. He's so good. He said, I don't need frame advantage. Hey, I just need 5B. What a poke. <laughs> But the tippy toes, and this isn't. This is a still the Robert show. Okay. Well, good. Light pressure, just not overextending. This is good. This is great for Robert. Notice he doesn't have any bar. Oh, but stop blocking low. Against Cool, that's a no go. Back dash off the ice press, very nice. Finds a throw. It's getting destroyed by that frame trap with the ice breath. Yeah, but gets out of the corner, gets the cross up, that jump deep cross up. One of the best crosses in the game, so much frame advantage. Ooh, I like the feint with the uh, with jump normal. More pressure. Player two wastes no time, even Quick and easy, very nice. Tamago getting one character down on the road for this really long comeback. Can, can he get past Kula? That is the main question we gotta deal with right now. Okay. I mean, already looking better so far. Gotta go for the hop. Higher jump does win in that situation, but the 2B and EX Ray spin. Tamago. Gonna spin the bar, so intelligent, but pixel of life. And they'll do it with the jump. Doesn't get the full, doesn't get a combo after it. Tamago's out of dodge, I'm gone. There is no penalty for running away. I'm building this bar back up. I'm building oh, the snowman. No. Oh no! Oh, he rolls backwards! He rolls backwards! Robert, spin the level one! What a call out! The roll away just to say no, sir. It's not gonna be that easy. Cronin costs extra, right? Oh, okay. It's facing out at that time. They're not gonna be able to find the throw. Wow. Reversal! He says it doesn't matter. The risk reward. I don't care. I die in one hit anyway. Two B hits. We got so much far on Kula. 
The vortex is gonna happen here. It's gonna be ice all over the place. Run away! Shadow Strike! Oh my god, lost a lot of armor. It's okay. Oh, okay. Raceman comes out. Nice pressure. Oh my oh god, the interruption! Oh my god, he's able to spend the meter. How in the world does Kula get to be the one to live and fight there, man? Unbelievable. The offense and the defense from Robert. We didn't see the anchor from Robert in any... I love it. I, I could do this every day if I could. I could just watch every day if I could. And I can't wait to watch this match because we got Geese Howard in the building. Dude, so Geese, really an underplayed character for sure, underdeveloped. So again, to see him come out is going to be incredible. But so far, the guard gate's kind of getting bullied here until we get our confirm, our first real look at the king. Right. This is a character I cannot wait to see get a little bit more juice. Yeah, he's Hopefully another one of those ones that he's another one of those ones that's very close to being very good. He just needs a couple little things. Alright, here comes Joe. Super cancel for the finish. There we go. Super Grenis. You know, again, one of the best Joes in the business, if not the best Joe right now. Just finding those quick confirms, making them count. And this is going to be uh, really the character at this point that I know Lokov for the best. Coming out with the Yamazaki here. Goes for the guard cancel roll to try to avoid the fireball, but the fireball doesn't come. Grant doing a great job not being predictable with his patterns here. Yeah, that's, the, that's the important part, right? We, we saw like, some people dismantle his joke pretty well from just kind of being really predictable with how the placement of the, the tornado uppers go. But now Lokov's Yamazaki. Oh my goodness, this character is then is the linchpin of his success. Oh my god. <laughs> he wakes up with the roll, tries to go for the DP, it does not work out. Oh man, Yamazaki able to take it down though, but not having a lot of meter here in Grenis. Coming in with the Gato two bars, looking really good on resources. <laughs> Look at look at this. It's patience from Lokov. A little bit of bar with the snake slash. Happy to be cornered because it's so tough to approach the counter on the opposite side. It actually worked. Oh my gosh. That I, I I'm gonna believe that was intentional, alright? You cannot convince me otherwise. Yeah, little pixel though. Try to go for oh, okay, you know, trying to go for some sneaky demon flip stuff. Not gonna work here. Spent the EX, able to get the poison here, and the stomps will actually kill this time. This is match point for player one. And now, yeah, Yamazaki, the crazy one. The character is literally nuts. And he may oh, and Lokop always makes it count. So we'll see what Conan can do. There's a challenge, nice. Um that's always a big thing that most people got to be really waiting for, right, Super, is when you see the long version of the hop special from Cronin, every, you can interrupt it, it'll be counter hit state, and then you can get usually a comp afterwards. If, if you are ready, that's, you know, one of the biggest anti Cronin techs you can get. The, in this battle of anchors, who can keep their player down solid longer? Slide gets punished. Big chance of Super Grenis gonna catch up the one meter, and has to be extra careful. Lokov with three bars can bring all of the pain in the world if he can find that, that any kind of hit. Has to be at least a crouch A, cross up, crouch C, one of those three. Okay. Up again. Try to go for the guard cancel. It's a little too far. It actually whiffs. Oh, pressure. Able to find the DP. 
Oh man, what an approach to that. Grenna's gonna take it. The first game down and a reminder, since this is loser's semis, not loser's finals, this is the final two out of three set tonight. The Lokov, kind of unnoticed now, needs to win two in a row to stay alive. Yeah, it's a, not a tall order for Lokov, but man, stuck with the keys. Kept the big boss man in it. I mean, did, got some hits in here, right here and there. I mean, the, the point match usually goes, like, swings one way pretty heavily. So I, I like trying, I like to see him trying again. Able to find a sweet dad time there. So one hit doesn't mean anything afterwards here. Joe able to get aggressive. Hard knockdown. Gets a safe jump. And now Lokov giving Grena some room. I don't know. It, it's tough when you respect the uppercut. Then your opponent just gets to get out and start something. But... Lokov just cannot gain ground. Double rip, who can punish? Yeah, so much startup on that fireball. Super Grenis was ready. All right. Yamazaki coming into a really similar situation the last time now. Go for this. He a little overhead attempt afterwards. He has not really gotten a chance to pocket a fireball either. Grenis has done an amazing job of following up his fireballs in ways where the pressure's a little too high for Lokov to even really get a chance. And now we're going to go for the old Joe stuff. Maybe going to look for the stun here, potentially. With that extra bar in the pocket. The X punches. Yamazaki hurt. And there it is. How much damage can we get from here? Doesn't get the combo. And then the guard cancel rollback, but no combo punish. Big chance for Lokov. It didn't max out, but at least the stun can't affect anymore. There we go, finally able to see a little bit of that pocket action here. Goes to the jump over, finds the hit, doesn't get the combo though. Like you said, still in this. It has to, if Lokov can get rid of Joe without Yamazaki, then they still have a chance here, but the combo confirm on the opposite side. Down goes Yama, and now it's all down to Gato. And what a sick super animation, I gotta be honest. But, but that, but besides the point of how cool it looks. Down to the anchor here. Joe is continuing to dominate until the Shatter Strike connects, and it's a very easy finish from there. Showing their resilience here. Now or never. Oh man. The Gato mirror. The cat fight. I'm so scared. Edge of my seat with both these players. The whiffy P. But oh, didn't get a better punish. Got a throw. The Chicago punish, as it's after called. Yeah, unfortunate there to see, you know, the Midwest showing up here, loser semis, but the 5D doesn't work out here. These jump-ins are so aggressive. Lokov trying to take the better of it, but Grenis mashing out of so many situations. He's so good at knowing when to press. Cute with the, 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 the flips, the dives, the punch though from Super Grenis. Wait a minute. I don't Super know if they Okay, just finished it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to say. Styling. Had a style. I thought there was still a character left, but I lied. No, oh, yeah. I mean, definitely able to close it out. That is a, one of those situations where it's uh, just whatever it takes. And I think... Do you think that we still see Geese here? I feel like... I do think Kula does really well against Joe. Uh, I just think that Grenis does a great job of being able to uh, to keep it relevant with the way that he spaces and paces his fireballs. Ready? Uh, but Tamago, how he evades that and how he's able to control the pace and kind of take this real estate back is going to decide a lot. As oh, we get a deep move. Unfortunate. But does it again. Says, okay. I could turn the tide real quick with just a quick one. You know, before people get used to the, what we're expecting and baiting stuff out. But, you know, that's a lot of data from Tamago already just in the first 15 seconds. Nice grab. Continuing this pressure. Yeah, Joe without any freedom. It's gonna be tough. Yeah, and he's not gonna be able to last here. He's able to take a kill. 
Yeah, if, if there's one character I don't want cornered is Joe. Because like, you, you don't really have, you don't you have the DP, but busting out is so much, is, you know, pretty tough. Especially against a character like Kula, so. Oh my gosh, just threw it in the face. I love it. I did I did a bad jump. I'm gonna DP because you think it's your turn. Someone check Tamago's wallet. And see how many of Super Grenis turns he has in there right now. Okay, trying to skate up. Nice throw tech. 5D, what a button. Ooh, that hit from perfect range, catching the normal. Ooh, chance? Yeah, good, good punish on that. Managed to run up, get the hit, even if it was light DP. Yeah, being ready. That's one of the things that makes Kula so strong is that uh, her things are hard to punish if you're not ready and already cryptic with running to stop her a lot of the time. Ooh, counter? No punish. It's okay. so... For a move that launches, it gives you a full combo. There's like some recovery on that. Hey, speaking of launching and getting a full combo, Shatter Strike on the anti air. He's oh, gonna go level two! It. Yes! Go for it. Oh. Amazing stuff to take the kill off of that one. Very, very strong showing. And now, oh man. What it was. This started out as a crazy lead for Tamago, I was gonna say. Hey, it's all down to Jenny. Oh, but the jump B again. Just, nice mark. Catching an airborne with the DP, but the EX bust out. Okay. What a grab. Super Grand is not afraid. Good block on the jumpy cross up. Do it again. He can't get he can't keep getting away with this. Okay. 5D. I got a little bit slowing it down. I love this slow pace. There you go. The backdash to beat out the EX. Just just making sure that it whiffed entirely. Didn't even want to give it a chance to block and get. Super Grenas. Wow. Tamago being dismantled all over the place. Yeah, just all at the hands of the cat, man. <laughs> Dude, Gato really took control of that game as soon as he came in and just really never let up off the pressure. There were some moments of, like, patience to try and get, like, whiff punishes, but for the most part, that was just pure offense. ODP punish again the block Tamago going for these early DPs and they're not paying off now Ooh, again as you're saying it tries to go for it in kind of a weird spot so it comes out DP comes through blocks the DP again yeah just really really like unbelievably aggressive on these reversal situations yeah, just gave up so much damage in life. Like, this is, if, if Tamago loses, it's going to come down to just trying to assert themselves. I mean, I know Super Grenis is challenging in a lot of spots, but even on Wake Up, yeah, he's just disrespecting like, Tamago all over the place, too. Like, this is to turn into a ball. Okay, he's going to save the meter. 2C, goes for the safe jump. CD gets the low, easy kill from there. Just goes for the rising tackle. anything for it almost whip punish okay unfortunately didn't get it because it was a little far away tomorrow gets a chance here oh my god the wake up 2a crouche sorry too much anime in my mind no here's the damage dato taking control two meters built up he has three actually easy kill on the level two Okay. No, just gonna go for the cute stuff. I like it. The the no mix up mix up into the grab. Wow. Gato. Ready? <laughs> what a start! Oh, punish too. My God, Tamago's just letting it rip. Again, Beyblade. You can't do it. Doesn't care. Oh, 
my god, and he reads the wake up super. One more hit, anything, trades again. Gato is unstoppable. I, I, I'm perplexed. I've never seen this side of Tamago. This is really, really super aggressive, Tamago. I uh, I saw a question in the chat, by the way. Is Kim usually good? It's harder to find instances of Kim being bad than than not, like, very, very Ready? strong. Like, he is generally a super strong. Yeah, the worst Kim is is when he's not in the game, so we have a, a little bit of time until that happens. I'm a Kim enjoyer. <laughs> Two games, though. Nice trade to Super Grandis here with the Joe. Oh, but a better jump in Tamago. Nice start of the offense. Alright, it's gotta win three games straight to stay in here, so this is this is the road for a big comeback. This team is locked in too. The order can change, of course. But oof, it's gonna be tough. Nice some beat. There's the punish on the roll, and now the Tarago show begins. Here comes season one. Oh, another great hop here. Finally getting a read on the fireball game here from Grenus. If there another game comes up, it's going to have to do a better job on these fireballs. But this is, uh, <laughs> dude, the great destroyer. <laughs> Gato coming in. <laughs> oh, my God. It's just the jump beak vortex. Thank you. You block it once, you got to block it twice. Okay, a little demon flip action. Goes for the cannon blocks! The air oh counter! God. Are you kidding me? Do you know how many Gatos actually go for that option? None! But Grenis was like, you One, know, Raph. I One Gato. Why That's why he's super Grenis. He's not regular Grenis. He's super Grenis. Oh my god, dude. There we go. Put him on the wall. Bro, spend all the meters. All the dragon, whatever it takes. Don't don't worry about resources for Cronin. Please kill Gato, dude. Let's jump in. Get some pressure, but doesn't get enough for it. Fishing for hits. Oh, here we go, jumpy time. Oh, he is whiffing. He is so aggressive. Grenis doesn't care. For sure, he's playing. Like a man with all, you know, all the life to live and nothing, uh, uh, nothing less to lose, excuse me. Sweep, jump CD, more pressure here, good block stuff from Tamago, waiting for that opportunity. Almost had it. Nice counter, here we go. Okay. Oh, nice fake command throw. Finds the standing C again. Doesn't spend the meter, but the 2A does connect. We finally get to see the robot. All right, we made it this far. Now, can Tamago close it out and continue on the trek to defeating Super Grenis? There's one B. Spend it. Take a shot. Wants to hold on to it instead. Looks for the overhead. Whips it. Here we go. This is all. This is it. Tamago's one of his last chances. Oh, instant Harrier round start. A little bit of damage. This is a hard knockdown. The block on the wake up. Now it's Grenis being greedy on the wake ups and getting blown up for it, but still has so much meter. It could turn us around with one DP. Bro, very high on the jump in there. Swing and response. Punish, okay. That's big. Ooh, frame trap. Level one. It kills. Oh, Tamago. Oh, he's not going to be able to knock one down. Super Grenis is going to go three to zero. He's going to move on to the grand finals. Wow. That was... uh. I don't think I'd be exaggerating to say that was the best. Insane. To even to say that sentence twice. Dude. So it begins the fight, the final ultimate battle between these monsters. And, and honestly, what looks to have been to me, one of the most stacked 
Uh, Tampa never sleeps. Ready? Dude, it is, it is just ridiculous. It, I, it always feels like it can't get better than it always does. Dude. Grand <laughs> finals. From the losers, though, is greatness. So we might get a, might get a set reset here with how good he's been playing. But Robert is going to be the first obstacle is the Kula. This is this is cool on point against Tamago was always cool as second. And that worked out so well, but now she's in her natural habitat, just destroying any other character she faced at round start. Okay, SCP delayed a little bit, finds the CD and goes for the jump in. Good nice block from Robert. And the jump connects. Hurricane Upper getting blown up, and uh, Roberts not lost any momentum from that winner's finals. Listen, predictable. Knows the fireball is coming. Able to completely nullify it there on the jump in, but here it is. See if we might get the mirror match coming up soon, potentially. Grant is getting very aggressive. Already has cool work to the corner. Uh oh. Unfortunate roll, and Robert takes advantage of it with the full punish to the corner. Alright, gonna go all the way? Yes. No chances left. You do not want Cool alive with a pixel. With any amount of health, you can finish her off to do the damn thing. And now the cat fight is back. Okay, two C's traded out. Let's roll away from the pressure here. Oh, and the whiff punish. Knowing that he's going to try and play the footsies. He says, you dare play footsies. In my side. <laughs> hey, Robert fires the hit. That's confirmed. Good amount of damage on that. He's going to set up a nice setup with the hard knockdown. But with the jump B, surprisingly. Okay, get him in the air. But again, pressure's on. Tries to go for the run-up, stuffs it with a 2A, smart. His corner combo is so sick. Mm, oh yeah, this character. Since day one, but the whiff. Chance for Robert. Oh my what god. Was the that? On the ponytail hitbox? Are you kidding me? Oh my god. DP punished on hit. Punish is dropped. Immediately closed out. Grandis gets the better of round one of the mirror match. And now we're into the anchor here. Robert coming in on the crone and gets DP for his troubles. He said, A taste of your own medicine. Oh, Robert swing, swinging right back, and it's a you know, quick kill. Kept it simple, one and a half bars. And now Cronin v Cronin. The mirror continues. Ready? Go! And it's here to shine each other's shoes. They just want to kick Paul or something. Boots. Oh, very nice. He's in the slide there. Able to break out of the pressure here. CD. Oh, that's good. Counter hit confirmed. Big damage on the OTG. A little bit more. And now just one more. Oh, look at the safe jump. But you know what he gets? Wake up, DP. Oh man, All just unwilling to budge fight. off of that pressure was just, just does a great job of being able to maintain himself and not get bullied. I think that's a, a thing that can come up quite often is uh is you kind of put yourself into weird spots where the opponent, uh, where you like structure your pressure in a way to where the opponent has a little too much room and they feel a little overconfident. Robert, mm -hmm. not letting that get away. Yeah, not at all. Just... Every little thing, even even with Gato having that, Super Gunners having, you know, Gato and Cronin just turn that around so fast. And the way Robert's pace and he plays that, it's just, it, it's so fast, but it's so much thought behind it. It's so hard to keep up and just get effective. For now, Super Gunners slowing things down, putting this Joe out there, getting this big damage and controlling everything. The reversal just barely connects. If Joe was wearing shoes, the cold wouldn't have affected him, but instead, <laughs> he's back in the mix here. Robert finds his knockdown. A little patient. Try to bait uppercut. Just waited it out. Nice tech through from both. Robert can still do it, but no. Extra damage without without the, the shoes on. Those five toes across the face. <laughs> oh my gosh, see there's, uh, that's the that's the balance of the no shoes for Joe. The checks and balances here. Great game design. <laughs> Goes for the rollback here to buy himself some space, able to get the trade out. 
These fireballs nullify the Shatter Strike in that scenario. There is so many things that beat fireballs in this game. Fireballs are good. Are, well, they're okay. Fireballs are okay. I'm gonna say that. They, they're, they, they're, they're definitely a tool, not a game plan. I 100% agree. Ooh. Shatters, shattered Shatter Strike. It's big for uh, Grenis here. He's extending this Joe lead. Oh no, and that is curtains for the Gato here. Super Grenis. Three meters still available here, so if you land a CD, half your life, just kiss it goodbye. Even that, just jumping over a fire, a uh, hurricane upper, and any little thing, it's, it's, this is all Super Grenis, but Robert not deterred. Wow, he's slow. Okay, he's one more level one uh, combo to finish the job, so Robert. Inching his way back. Trying to go for the CD there. Does not work out. Two meters still remaining. Robert doing a great job staying in this while maintaining resources going into the next character. Always an important thing when you're coming back in KOF. Ooh, Shatter Strike. So it's a free bar. Thanks for the gift. Slide under the hop. Good block there. Gets hit by the sweep, though. I love the way he just throws it out a little hot. Just knowing that it goes over lows, that it leads to so much, so much of a combo. The delay? Oh no! Crown and McDougal! Aye, but look what we've got on the other side. Not only the mirror, but we've got the most dangerous thing you can see. He's got the banana on the bottom. <laughs> He's got a bunch. Ooh boy. So Robert, you know, has to play this in and out, make those jumps as unpredictable as possible if he wants to get this through, finds the low hit, and we're already starting off with a life lead here. Oh, this, he's scheduled his meter at a point where he's going to be able to get a one bar combo every single touch, but here, all of that work is deleted. Oh, next hit will do it. With two bars, a good position though. Robert can't get hit because that's gonna be it. He can't get touched because that'll do it for Super Grenis, who was re ready, willing, and able. And we're up one, tied one one. This is what the, you know we gotta do. Sometimes you are forced to get into your Cronin bag and make it count. Yeah, I mean, that is uh, how a lot of these games get decided is that mirror match is so, so important here. One to one. Yeah, I mean, it, it was still, I mean, Robert turning that around after such a huge lead on Grenis' side. Yeah. So it's usually if Robert can avoid that, he can pretty much close it out and blocking another uppercut. He's blocked, like, so many DPs from Grenis, Tamago. It's just a... Uh, Really good defensive call-outs. Oh, but these constant harassments of the short hop overhead. Dude, Robert's adjustments, whatever he changed here going into the Joe matchup has just been working. Ooh. Yeah, that back out here, yep. Turn that hurricane warning into a blizzard. Kula just denying any sort of offense from Super Grenis, and now the tables have turned yet again. Ooh, he's able to go for the slide in a really aggressive scenario there. Uh-oh, the EX in the corner. You know what happens next. Take him, take him for a ride, yeah. Oh, read the roll. Hey, good from Grenis. Gonna get all that life back and force Robert. Well, Robert threw out Bar and put some for it, so really good for him. Yeah, coming out of that with full life. Incredible stuff here. Yeah, Robert says, you know that life bar, a little too full. I mean, you know, I'll take some of it off your hand. Mm -hmm. I'll get it, we'll get it back fast anyway. That, that, that perception just wouldn't let it rock. Oh, the punish. That's big, going to go to the corner here. Okay, try to go for the punish on the roll again. Didn't quite work out. 
Ooh, little empty low. This is big for Robert. He's gonna need a little bit of bar, and that's gonna do it. He said mental stack is just overloaded. You watch oh, Gato jump. It's gonna be a, Is it gonna be the jump in? Is it gonna be the low? Is it gonna be the flip? The stackers are outstanding, but so is Cronin. Just needs one kind of small combo to do it. Oh, does not get the OTG because it was tech techable. Hey, but he gets the air to air, bringing it down to the mirror here. Robert is going to be sitting on exactly one bar of an advantage, though. Almost, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. It's very close on. Oh my god, what a counter hit confirm again from those jump CDs. So the half your life gone. We're going to find the throw. Well, control here, but the hop is immediately DP'd. A lot of damage coming out. Robert has enough for a level two now on his next hit. Oh my God. Oh, too far for the boot. No big steppy. Okay, fireball, you know, trying to get him to guard cancel. Oh, standing C. Dude, able to find it in the most clutch of positions. Oh my god. I saw somebody ask in the chat, by the way. They say, you don't play KOF, but that's why Cronin's third. Cronin is a, is a fantastic at utilizing meter, so he is usually anchor. But you can see him in any position depending on counter picks. He's a pretty good character to move around. It's just he he thrives with how high his damage is. Round one. Yeah, they, they, you could not ask for a better person to use all that bar when you get it. Now, game number four. Robert needing one more to be your champion here. And already we're starting out with, with you know, violence. DPs left and right, you know, uh, mash throws, any little thing just to get any kind of advantage. Oh my I... god! Genius level mix. He's able to hit him in the end of the super. Like, unfortunate no one, stuff there from Robert. No one knows when it recovers. No one knows when to punish it. I got you. Up and connects. Nice tech of the throw. Oh. I mean, every time we've seen Joe be successful, Grenis has been able to take it to the end. Ready? Go! Wait, wait a minute though. Gato time is here. Already in the corner you go and uh Grenis? Yeah, we, we saw a lot of bit of the Mago Mash. Going for those like wake up crotch A's. Full combo in the corner here. Robert is gonna use a setup with the overhead. Alright. Yeah, that neat and tidy little restand in the corner. So smart and goes for the one-time mix on that quick overhead. Even game again. Robert is on tournament point, by the way, This uh, for for this game, so Grant has got to be thinking about it. I mean, the back and forth isn't great. So if Grant's, I wouldn't be surprised if Grant is taking this to game five. Here goes the damage, taking a, taking a ride up. Oh, nice. Throwing him out of the run under it, putting Robert in the corner, but Robert manages to roll out, and it's time for him to party. Mm, what a great roll underneath there. I got mixed. I thought it was going to cross up on the other side, but so it was like Super Grandis believed the same thing. I used to, dude, it's been the JB show. What is this? JB, I thought he plays Street Fighter. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm sorry. Man. <laughs> Yeah, I'm never. I won't be on TNS ever again. <laughs> <laughs> all right, this is all that a Cronin. I mean, anyone. If anyone's gonna salvage your tournament life, it's Mr. McDougal. But tossing him like yesterday's garbage in the corner. But you know what? That garbage burns. Wakes up with it. He said, "One man's trash rap." <laughs> He's gonna break himself out of it here. This is for potentially the tournament. The Cronin mirror. Nice tag. Okay, big. And confirm off that TNG Grimace. It's going to be a nice life for you. But, okay. It all turns around so fast because they both have all the bar. Okay, 
good throw on the attempt to attack from a little too high here. Does get the connection, has a bar. It is gonna kill, and we're gonna be headed to a game number five. Very nice turnaround. Again, I mean, the system continues. If Joe wins the point match, Grenis, they will take it down. Robert, gotta make sure you can take control of the point matchup. It really has decided everything, almost every time. Yeah, it's just been always down to the McDougals and always down to just like the, the, this, this little momentum for either player. And now game five, where we're just like, I mean, it's been one, it's been one back and forth. It's not been like 2-0 getting reverse 3-0. It's not been any of that, but it is Super Gun is blocking these DPs. Oh, he's trying to go for the DP of his own. Huge fun is coming out, but all the way to the corner. Oh my god, how did that not hit? So sneaky, I have no idea, but something about that pushed her hurtbox into a crazy spot. <laughs> oh, we got Super Grenis. Oh, too far for a confirm moth mate. Spooky. There we go, busted out. <laughs> he, te he said, I'm sick of teching throws, I want to fight a couple in a row, and he's finally able to just rip the DP, and if this tells us anything, Robert's been fighting against the curse. Nice. EX for that extra extension of the hard knockdown, and the chip damage. Say it, with, say it on his chest. Oh, that palm strike does so much. But now, coming with three bars, almost three and a half, Grenis in a huge, huge advantage here. Look at the press it. Look at how aggressive this is. Look at the guard gauge. The pressure's on. But Robert's turning it back around. Oh my gosh. Close A giving you so much frame advantage. That pressure looking good for Robert, who's changing up how they go about it. We're seeing close B, we're seeing close A. Okay. Oh, from the jump in, spends the EX. Robert really trying to get him way back into this and goes for the clone, but the DP comes out with an anti air. The shatter strike! Spend it. Level two. Are we going to see it? No. OTG instead with one EX bar. Into the command grab! Oh, Grenis no. so ready to turn this into a reset. Robert down to Mr. McDougal. Oh, nice DP though. He's gonna try and save the bar. I love that. He is thinking about the win. A great decision here. He's gonna come in one bar behind, but winnable reset or tournament point now. Ooh, wait a minute. That's a great start for Grenis, who's got two bars. Oh, the call out with the DP, level two. And now a throw, an OTG, a DP, anything. The cross up gets a hit. Uh oh, uh -oh. level one, does spend level two. He's gonna hold on to it, gets aggressive, finds the hit again. Is it enough? He has a meter, it's it. Oh my God, Robert takes the shot, fights off the comeback and is able to take it in one set. Oh, Robert is going to be your TNS champion over Super Grenis. What a set between these two. Oh, my God. Incredible stuff from both of these players. Oh, my God. This is all I saw at the end there. All I saw was... <laughs>